All right, so welcome, everybody. This is uh, potentially one of the most chaotic uh, games that we're going to see in this year. This is AOE Olympics. We will have Rubenstock and Yupe in blue and red on the right side of the map. The map is called Chaos Pit. And we have Yupe in Persians in blue. We have Gots for uh, Rubenstock in red. Other team is going to be Team Italy by Pete Martel. He's using Nani Maran as his username, but he's Pete Martel in purple in Incas. And we'll have Kamigawa as Franks in yellow on the left. So with Chaos Pit, uh, I think you don't start with a boar, or maybe you have one boar. I don't remember, but you definitely have to push deer. You have to chop through this layer to get access to the gold on the outside, because the middle of the map has no gold, but you do have stone, so towers is definitely a possibility over here. Apparently, Pete is going to find Ruben's TC here, not eating any damage, and yeah, the save matchups are just ridiculous here. So we have Franks, which can have an insanely good scouts opening. Incas, well, for the sake of dropping towers in the opponent's face, and of course, Yupa with Persians, it would be a massive surprise for me if Ruben Stock went for the traditional scouts play, but there's a chance he might just go for that because everybody is like, oh yeah, Yupe is just gonna TC drop his opponent, but there is a chance he's not going to. Ruben Stock on the other hand with Gods, that could also go multiple ways, but I would say excessive amounts of militias or men at arms, maybe accompanied by towers is a likely scenario here. Surprising that we don't see Celts in the beginning, but I guess Kami and Pete kind of suspected that they're going to face some cheesy strategies over here. Alright, so Pete is going to chop through this one. I think it's uniform uh, free layers of wood everywhere on the map, so you don't have to specifically pick a great location to chop through. But uh, it's notable that Yupe is not chopping outside, so he definitely wants to do combat in the middle. Sivs are hidden, pick no repeat. Yes, that is correct. Uh, meanwhile, for Rubenstock, he's the one who is going to try and chop out. And uh, same thing here for Kamigawa. But as I said, it's a very clear indication that Yupe wants to go very aggressive in the middle, that he's not even attempting to chop out. To me, that uh, kind of says that, oh yeah, I am not even intending to ever move out. Or at least not in the next 25 minutes. So, um, starting off, we do have, uh, I assume, free on wood for Kamigawa, indeed, because he's going scouts. We only have two on wood, by the way, from uh, Pete Martel. Two on wood, for me, tells that he really wants to have a super fast feudal age over here, with all the be deer being pushed in here. This feels like he just wants a super fast feudal. Um, for Yupe, he has five on uh, wood. And last time I checked, 5 on wood is not really a traditional scouts build. Neither it is a man at arms or anything that is not a douche. So, get ready everybody. That TC will soon disappear and appear over here. I wonder how Kamigawa is actually gonna play this one. Apparently he's just dropping the houses here, which is nice. So he's kind of blocking uh, potential TC spots, but there is still quite a lot of... Uh, Spots to drop that TC too. Meanwhile, for Rubenstock, that is four on wood. Feels like it could just be a malicious opening or it could be a man at arms type of an opening. We'll see what's up with that. And the surprise, I thought uh, Yupe is gonna go for Kamigawa, but that's not really the case. He's going for uh, Pete here. This is an interesting decision because you're douching the Inca player who was probably going aggressive anyways. I'm not sure if this is the right play to pay 8. I feel like if you knock out the scouts player, that's a bit more impactful. Because at this point, Kamigawa might have a free boom into... Well, not really a boom, but basically a free build up to scouts with Franks. And that could be pretty painful for Yupa and Rubenstock to deal with. On the other side, one thing that this could achieve is just uh, give a lot of space for Rubenstock. And, uh, well, I'm not sure what Ruben is planning here. But there's a chance he might go pretty passive, and uh, I guess soon we are going to find out that is 22 and the barracks just going up. This is going to be a man at arms opening. The problem here for Suomi is going to be mobility, I feel like. Because Rubenstock will not have uh, fast units, he's going man at arms. 
and you Pep, will have no military so there's a chance that at this point Kamigawa is just gonna run around with his scouts and uh, kill a lot of course the good news here is that the scouts cannot hit the lumberjacks if they are walled in and uh, this could be the plan you wall in your villagers and uh, there's a chance that Pete would have just gone for uh, archers because if he goes for archers here then the quick calls don't work but if you have no archers either the Frankish player makes archers to kill the villagers which is not ideal or the Italian team will not have archers and the quick walls will be perfectly fine. Anyways, ideally you want to stop your opponent's feudal age progress by taking out the town center, but that isn't really going to happen over here. So, Pete is uh, going to save that TC up until he reaches feudal age, which is everything that he wants from this scenario. How can he go at arms? Um, Rubenstock always finds a way. Indeed, he doesn't have gold, but I could imagine an early market and uh, just selling his stone. I'm not saying it's uh, going to be super efficient, but I mean, there is the man at arms I was talking about. We are talking about Rubenstock, he doesn't need to play this game as it's meant to be. And uh, that TC is likely gonna go down. Looking at the Voyager count, Pete Martel is behind by one compared to Rubenstock. A notable difference is going to be that. Uh, Pete got uh, Town Watch pretty early on, so he knows that a second douche is coming his way. And I think the problem here for Pete is going to be that, hey, he's not gonna have any food. And here comes the big fight, and look at that, that is Gothic Men at Arms flooding the fight alongside Yupes Watchers. And it's not like Kamigawa can really help. Like, he could hit Rubenstock's eco. I feel like Rubenstock should probably wall his wheels off, at least on the wood line. Because the mobility is not going to be there for uh, Suomi to deal with the scouts. But at this point, yeah, Spearman should be also fine for Rubenstock. And uh, I wouldn't really call the eco for Pete efficient. In fact, that's everything but efficient. And since he doesn't have barracks, killing that scout is a bit painful. And <laughs> he has nowhere to run. He's going to take this fight over here, by the way, so there is a need for more units to fight with. Rubenstock also lost one or two Voyagers, but look at those Voyager counts. I mean, 26 for Kamigawa, 24 for Rubenstock, of course. You pay 27, but doesn't actually have uh, Feudal Age, you know. And here it comes! The second one, Kamigawa trying to vote this one off as much as possible. Not sure how well this is going to go, but look at that convoy. Oops. Look at the convoy of villagers. <laughs> you know, I don't usually have time to play around with my YouTube quite often, but I can tell you that I will probably upload this series in its entirety to my YouTube because I think this is going to be potentially a series that is uh, almost going to be part of AoE 2 history. So, there's the second TC, and if it goes up, uh, I'm not sure if it's within the range of Kami's TC, but it should be, because Kami's TC is able to fire at it, and, oh, Pete Martel got baited quite hard over here, because the TC goes up, so the Voyagers also take quite a lot of damage, and Kamigawa at four military, two of them are over here, but they will die to Spearman, Yupe is at 350 points, but who cares, because in the meanwhile, Rubenstock is just chilling. Rubenstock is just chilling, and, uh, you know, Pete is running for his life. He's down to 15 villagers. And uh, Kamikawa is in danger of losing his TC here as well. Because you need a huge amount of wood to repair this. In the meanwhile, we have uh, Chop Through from Rubenstock. He's the first player to Chop Through. And you can see that Kamikawa is not through yet. He isn't focusing these villagers on all of this wood that he could chop. Probably just busy microing and not dying. Oh, this is a disaster for you, Pedo. The absolute disaster. He's pulling the villagers from the wood line, but this leaves it completely open. And even though that's not a lot of scouts, that's still not ideal for Yupe over there. Anyways, what a better place to start farming than right next to your opponent's town center, right? Let's see. At this point, Kamigawa isn't really repairing his town center. In the meanwhile, Pete is trying to get his own TC up. Uh, kinda unsuccessful right now. His TC is going to be denied here. And why isn't there a mod 
for Doubt Phase onto Town Centers. Luckily for Pete, he has Inca Villagers with plus one, plus one, so he can actually keep those Villagers alive. <laughs> oh man, what are we witnessing? For a moment, there was uh, no TCs for either Italian player. And at this point, I think Yupe could just rush this stable down with the Voyagers and make sure to have these Spearmen close by. If the Spears are close, you know, the Scouts cannot really do damage to the Voyagers here in this one. So I do approve Yupe's move here to knock down the stable. But instead, he's like, okay, what else could we do? He's out of stone and he's not mining any. So dropping another Town Center isn't really a possibility. And apparently, Kamigawa also chopped out. He's going to drop his TC over here. I think... What was uh, Yupe thinking about? Just rushing this one down with Voyagers? I'm not sure if this is going to work. Somehow, Spearman got inside. But Italy gets both of his TCs back. However, Pete Martel is at 13 Voyagers. Pete Martel is at 13 Voyagers. And guess what? Yupe is going to lame the farms here. Because he can. I still believe that uh, he should have killed this stable, just for uh, safety, you know. Because at this point, those spearmen are kind of struggling to keep up with all these scouts, and Ruben's stock could actually lose Voyagers here to the scouts. In fact, the only way I see back for Italy is that if uh, Kamigawa is able to do massive damage to Ruben's stock's eco with these scouts. And this is why I said that I feel like the lack of mobility could actually hurt uh, Suomi quite badly over here. And this one should be walled off, just to make sure that those scouts don't exit over here, because that will be pretty disastrous. Anyways, what's up with Rubenstock? He still has his TC up, and, uh... Well, apparently he needs food. He's just gonna rush down this <laughs> patch of berries. Meanwhile, he's mining stone, and technically, Yupe has enough. For another town center. Hang on everybody. It's not over yet. This is the new spot if I'm not mistaken. Here comes Yupe. For another douche. And... <laughs> Look at that. I mean Rubenstock walled in. Um, this little crossing. So that Pete cannot chop out. Because Kamigawa could exit. And drop his TC over here. But Pete cannot. And he's gonna get douched again, running for his life, and slowly he's gonna get overrun by otherwise kind of crappy Spearman. Uh, we do have quite a lot of Scouterinos over here, but Yupe doesn't really care. He's just fighting with Voyagers against Scouts. Oh, uh, it would benefit so much for uh, Suomi to kill that stable. And Voyagers kill it quite fast, so that could really be a possibility. Ah, uh, Pete isn't going to give up on this easily. He's thrushing, but... Ah... Uh, that's a lot of weak villagers, but in the end we are going to see an Inca Trush. Villagers are being pulled from Rubenstock to fight this one. Not ideal, but I mean, he's still going to be fine and Pete is going to be dead. So at this point it will be up to Kamigawa to carry this, but Kamigawa is slowly getting closer to Castle Age and meanwhile uh, Rubenstock isn't. And uh, that is a big danger I would say for Suomi, that they will have two players who play very very chaotic. But right now, Pete is just buying time for Kamigawa. And Kamigawa still has the scouts, he can snipe Voyagers pretty nicely, I would say. And uh, if he gets up to Castle Age and gets some knights out, things could get really problematic for Suomi, I would say. Anyways, the scouts are still alive. I'm just so tilted by Suomi not destroying this table. It's not like Ruben or Yupe needs his Voyagers to anything else. Ruben stock at 42 wills, but still very far away from actually clicking up to Castle Age. And meanwhile, Kamigawa is already going up. I feel like Suomi might have uh, misplayed this tiny bit and overinvested into this. Because once Castle Age kicks in, the Spearman will be pretty much useless against the Knights. And as ugly as it looks like for Pete Martel losing essentially of his Vultures, right now he's sacrificing himself. Just to make sure that uh, Rubenstock is delayed to Castle Age. And if Rubenstock is delayed to Castle Age, um, they might just get overrun by knights. And uh, even if Rubenstock starts making pikemen, they are not going to have the mobility. Which is a significant concern, I would say. As you see, Kamigawa is doing an excellent job sniping Voyager. 16 kills to 7 deaths. Yupe has 6 kills to 10 deaths, by the way. 
it's actually pretty cost efficient considering that he was only fighting with voyagers and just to make sure Pete never gets through look at that <laughs> Rupert Stock what are we witnessing over here I told you this is going to be a crazy series I don't usually like to change my uh, schedule in the last second but I just I just couldn't miss it if, if I miss this series I would have regretted it in my entire life trust me anyways that's a nice blob of spearmen and this is the moment when Rubenstock is going to realize oh shoot soon knights are coming my way um, there is also plus one attack on these scouterinos so they're actually pretty good at sniping vultures second barracks coming up Ruben is just gonna flood with the uh, pikes here I still believe that if they destroy this table these knights wouldn't be killing them right now uh, that could be a game losing mistake for Suomi that they didn't uh, destroy it when they had the chance because right now Ruben still kind of has to keep his spearmen close to his base because there is still quite a lot of scouts running around and now they don't have the chance to kill that stable and suddenly Pete somehow still alive with a glorious soldier count of 13 but Yupe is still Dark Age I don't know where his TC is at right now look at that Yupe can also click up Yupe can click up into Feudal Age that is going to be a magnificent 30 minute Feudal Age so I feel like the lack of mobility could hurt quite massively for uh, Suomi. Here we go, big fight coming up. And uh, is that a throwing axeman? Yes, it is a throwing axeman. Where did that boy come from? It comes from a castle here. I'm somewhat surprised because I didn't see Kamigawa actually get a ring stone. But I feel like Suomi might be dead here. Because they don't have an answer to throwing axeman. Plain and simple. Even they are going to struggle against the knights, because spearmen aren't meant to kill knights. They're going to be okay, but not magnificent. And that is a castle drop from Kamigawa. Take that- <laughs> Oh, he could actually castle drop Yupe and say, look what I have. But nope, it's gonna go in the direction of Rubenstock, I'm pretty sure. Because he's the stronger player right now. Yupe isn't dangerous, Rubenstock is. That's a lot of spearmen, but still, they are not going to do anything against uh, throwing X-Men. If they were pikemen, maybe in huge numbers, but with good micro, these guys sh shouldn't do any damage. Now, how is Rubenstock doing with stone? Not really great. He's apparently gonna go for uh, monasteries, potentially to even convert a few X-Men, but X-Men train very, very fast. Where is Debbie when you need her? Debbie would be so happy about this game. Congratulations to Yupe for reaching Feudal Age with a glorious time of 29 minutes 39 seconds. Last time I played uh, on Wubli in the new player lobby, and when I wasn't using any hotkeys, I think I had a uh, similar Feudal Age time. But still, that's just a flood of pike, man. Uh, Rubenstock is just gonna say, hang on, I have my pikes. And I'm not sure about the slinging rules about the tournament, but technically Yupe could be close to slinging Rubenstock. In fact, Rubenstock could sneak a Voyager around. Kamigawa is void on both sides, but it's just a single layer pause side. And Yupe is gonna move out. This is a smart choice, because if they void this one off, which is pretty easily volable, they should have a kind of free boom on the outside. And uh, the problem is that Pete is trapped here. Pete cannot really exit. That means that Pete Martel doesn't have access to gold either. Looking at the villager count, coming up is at 54, Rubenstock is a bit behind, but the difference isn't that significant, I would say. And something like Mangonos and Pikemen would be nice to just push back the throwing axis here. Um, let's see what we have, we have just a mill from Yupe, he's gonna keep his TC over here in the middle. And this sneaky villager apparently isn't achieving anything. By the way, just for you to point out... This is only game number one in the best of five on this map, so we might be in for a long, long, long evening, and it is what we call karma. Douching might result in your opponent dropping a castle in your face, and suddenly it is Yupe who is gonna have to run for his life. But I think he's fine with it, I mean, this castle, sure, it's going to be nice, but it's not really going to achieve a lot of things. In the meanwhile, I would love to see Rubenstock just adding a siege workshop for Manganos. It could kill the Throwing Axeman, it could harass Pete, 
and Pete still only has six watchers on food. He's not really going to be a factor for a long, long, long time. And meanwhile, for Yupe, he could drop a TC on the outside. Pete dropped? Oh, I see. I guess since I'm one minute spectator delay... I will only notice that later. But still, it's not like Pete took any damage from dropping, let's be honest. Sometimes you lose some villagers if you drop from a game. What was happening for Pete? I mean, he was just playing SimCity or something right now because he can't really do anything else. Anyways, we do have the Throwing Axeman coming in here. Yupe could lose additional villagers, something I massively dislike, by the way. Like, he has wheels here, he has wheels. He could just pull all those wheels and uh, get outside here. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the moment when, uh, yeah, Pete dropped. And, oh no. Let's hope that uh, everything is right with the save game. Because right now it's actually just paused. Fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed. I really hope they don't replay this. Technically, they are supposed to be able to save it still. I mean, the game is paused. Um, Yupe or Ruben's stock can save and restore. Yeah, I know Pete's PC died, but technically anyone can save and restore if I'm not mistaken, so... Basically, either Yupe, Ruben or Kamigawa could just unpause the game and uh, save it. Well, they were saying they can't actually save, but why? Why can't they do that? You can do a save and restore. Or, huh, I, I might see the problem here. Because Pete is crossed out, so there's a chance, like... Yeah, that's the problem, that he might actually be considered defeated. And Kamigawa says he sees an autosave. Yeah, there's actually a save game that says, uh, save on disconnect, Pete Martell. So, let's hope it is... I'm reading you, um, from uh, Ruben's stream as well. So, if I... I technically cannot unpause it, but it's actually going to be a save and restore. Yeah, they seem to have a save game file. Let's hope Pete's PC is alright, because I want to see this happening. I really want to see this happening. Okay, so what you're going to see indeed is uh, that game is over. It's just because this is when they save and restore. And, uh, typical Italian hardware. Let's hope everything is right with this one. They're trying. Um, can we spectate restored games? Uh, technically, yes. It was a bug before that you couldn't, but technically restored games can be spectated.
Um, because we had some drops, like, for example, in... Although, Battle of Africa was actually recorded games. But you should be able to spectate live games as well. And it's not working. No! No! I mean... I was... I was so hyped for this. I was so hyped for this. I was like, okay, this is going to be one of the cheesiest games I've ever seen ever. And there's a chance they have to replay it. Oh, shoot. And the problem is that uh, neither of the players or neither of the teams had a clear chance or like a clear lead. Because... Uh, Like, for Suomi, they had uh, one player that was okay, and one was uh, pretty much okay but behind. For Italy, they had Kamigawa, who was quite a bit ahead, but they had a dead player, essentially. Finns were winning. It's tough to call, because technically, Pete can still snowball that. Okay, there is a thing called Restore Game. And uh, Kamigawa says... Uh, it seems like they might not have it. Pete 15, Poppy bet 40. And Pete couldn't... Uh, it's not impossible for Pete to carry that, to be honest. Um, yeah, I'm, I know Kamigawa, I have Yupi's stream open, so I know everything. I know everything, and I'm sad that this wonderful and glorious game might need to be replayed. I'm sad. I mean... At this point, we are just in before game number one, basically. And we could have more. I'll still probably upload this. What do we do? Um, Technically, I'm not an admin to make a decision. So I guess that's something that you have to negotiate. I feel like um, n neither of the teams actually had a clear lead. So... I wouldn't say that they were winning. But yeah, it's something that you should discuss, I think. Uh, but as much as I don't like it, it might need to be a replay. Because, uh, as I said, technically, neither of the sides were a lot ahead. That was an open game. Because, yeah, we can do forward thinking like, hey, could Kami snowball this? with the better eco and like the outside control but there were so many variables this game was so far from being over that at this point anything that um would we would just discuss here is just a prediction was the solution i don't know but Apparently they are replaying. Oh, I'm sad. I mean, I could have had a massive, massive clickbait. Uh, from this on YouTube. But still... Um, we are still in for five games on Chaos Pit. And... Uh, Honestly, I know you and Ruben well enough to know that they might just try the same thing. The only sad thing about this is that we have seen an actually successful triple douche. And, uh, well, we didn't get the chance to see the end of the game. Hey, Maggie, hello. Hello. 
So we're going in for game number one once again. I will still probably upload game number one to YouTube just for the... Oops. I just hit my microphone, so... Sorry for those who actually have headphones. You might have just gotten deaf. But, yeah. I will still upload the first game just because it's actually... A very, very, very entertaining first 20 minutes of a game. All right, so we have a restart. Well, hopefully this doesn't actually happen again. And we're just waiting for the game. So what is your guess? Do they douche again just for the laws? Uh, it's so tough to say. I mean, my heart says they should douche because, you know, it's entertainment value. But, I mean, they could change strategy. This is why it's so hard to say, oh yeah, let's just replay it because all the strategies you worked on is just going to go down the drain. But, I guess they probably have some backup strats and, uh, I still believe that it would have been better to douche the player uh, that's doing the scouts. So I feel like uh, this build would actually be, or this strategy would be better executed if you douche the scouts player first. Because uh, in the end, he's the one that did the most damage. If you think about that, what can Incas do in Castle Age? Not really much. Like... Um, they can go archers, you can play against that quite nicely with the skirms. If they go for uh, an eagle play, you can play with scouts or later knights. So I feel like uh, douching the scouts player is actually better. They have trouble restarting. Okay. They didn't want to let the incorrupt rush happen, but honestly... I feel like Inca Trash is one of the big, most overrated things in this game. Like, uh, especially against gods. Gods can have a pretty decent Mad Arms opening. Let's say the Inca player pulls 7 villagers to fight. You make 4 Mad at Arms. Because I think... Uh, let me do the mats here. You might need to sell a bit of a stone for that and you're in the market for it. But I could imagine a build. Where you actually have... Uh, Rushed up market in early feudal. You already have free militias out with gods. Something that you can do without mining gold. Like free militias and loom fits into a standard gothic build order. Wait, gods even have loom for free. Even better. So technically, you need 10 gold to get the man at arms. Which is not something that you can actually do right away if I'm not mistaken. Zero gold available to mine, that is correct. But I could imagine a build that's essentially somewhat similar to a Man at Arms Archer's opening, with the difference that uh, you invest into a market very early instead of uh, actually playing with an Archer range. Because if you think about a Man at Arms Archer's build, it opens Man at Arms, you can more or less do the same thing. And uh, the first Archer range comes up very fast. That wood can be turned into a market instead, sell your stone, or uh, sell a bit of a food, and you can actually get the Mad Arms upgrade. It's not that straightforward, and I'm not saying it's super efficient, but I feel like they are a bit overrating the Inca Rush. But anyways, this is just going to be game number one, by the way. So... We are in for a long, long, long evening. I mean, it's 11 p.m. here already for me, so there's a chance I might sleep very, very, very little tomorrow. Which I somewhat dislike, but it is what it is. As I said, this is a series you do not want to miss. Yeah, I see everything. I know they have issues launching. I know they have issues with whatever... So, we'll see how it goes.
All right, according to UPS stream, they will actually be launching it. They need to make it uh, outside faster than their team for that though. Um, oh yeah, that, that's actually for towering. I think a towering play would actually play nicely with Celts. Because with Celts, you would have uh, a much faster lumberjacking. Um, but yeah, Kalitz is definitely a top tier civilization for Chaos Pit, just for the sake of chopping outside. Even then, I'm just not sure how much faster Kalitz are compared to standard civs. They should be a bit faster, but I'm not sure if, it, if it's going to be enough to chop through, walk outside, walk all the way around, and tower your opponent at the same time. I'm not sure if uh, you can squeeze it in fast enough. It could work, but it might be a very, very tight thing to do. All right, here we go. No one was scouts, of course, but it is just game number one. And uh, we could have game number two, game number three, game number four, game number five with scouts. All right, so welcome everybody. Unfortunately, the previous uh, attempt on this map was just lost because Pete's computer crashed. But anyways, this is going to be one of the most beloved and crazy matchups of this year, I believe. Team Suomi, the players known for having massive games. Yupa with Persians on the left in blue and Ruben Stalking Gods in red. And on the right side, Team Italy with Pete Martellas Incas in purple and Kamigawa as Franks in yellow. We have Chaos Pit. For players that already love to play Chaotic, this is just crazy. And in the previous attempt, we had Yupa with a triple douche. I wonder if he's going to do the same thing. I still believe that uh, just for the sake of limiting the mobility of the enemy team, going for the douche on the scouts player would be better, because it's understandable that they want to stop the Inca rush, but I feel like the Inca rush is just a much slower thing in comparison to Kamigawa scouts that are just running around and sniping vultures. So, I feel like limiting the mobility of the enemy would actually be a pretty good move from uh, Suomi, and for that reason they have to do uh, Kamigawa instead of Pete, and just let the Voyager rush happen. Here. So, let's see. Yupe is going to do the exact same thing here, not moving to the outside to chop over here, instead he's going to choose one of the wood lines in this one. And if he goes for 5 Voyagers on Wood, it's pretty straightforward. By the way, just for bragging rights, I'm gonna tell you that uh, before the Visible Cup, I actually asked Yupe for uh, a build order with douches. And uh, I have Ruben Stock's specialized douche build order written down. So he actually handed me his own douche build order. And uh, I'm still a happy, happy person that knows... How would to precisely douche just like Yupe? Anyways, 5 on wood. Did anyone think that Suomi is going to change strategy? Because apparently they will not. And on the other side we will uh, have a change of plans potentially. Because previously it was uh, what appears to be a man arms opening. In this one it's only 3 on wood. Okay, there is a fourth one coming in. For Ruben stock. By the way, after the gods received the free loom buff, they're actually one of the most legit saves for Chaos Pit. Just for the sake of having the free loom. Still first game? Yes, it's still the first game. Because uh, the previous attempt on the first game was um, crashed for Pete and they couldn't restore. So they are replaying game number one. And this is a much faster douche, I believe. And they're going for the exact same thing. They're just going for the exact same thing. They're just gonna go and douche Pete here. Pete knows what's happening. He's trying to prevent that, but I think he might be too late. He might be too late for this one. Say hello to a friendly town center in your neighborhood. It's like... R Yupe is going to be... Oh, you are not escaping this this easily. And I really hope that they can be as successful as they were in the previous game. Because, you know, that's just some quality YouTube content for me. Anyways, 
Um, this voyager is just chilling over here. And uh, an interesting fact that Yupe said about douching is that if you have leftover sheep, carry them over. Because you want to take food right by the opponent's down center from sheep. And Yupe also gets housed here. I think he just forgot about it. So, the thing is that, uh, as I said, the reason why this could work in Feudal Age is because if you have your villagers walled in, the Franks cannot kill them. They are not gonna go archers. And uh, unlike the Incas that have towers to kill villagers behind the walls and behind quick walls, Franks basically can't do anything unless they start adding archers, which is a very unlikely scenario. So, from this aspect, if Suomi is able to void the villagers, including Ruben's stock, like on this wood line, the scouts will not achieve anything. Anyways, Pete is uh, just about to click up, and in the previous try, Pete managed to get the feudal age before losing his TC. In this one, I think Ruben's stock started earlier, and there's a chance Pete is not going to get the feudal age because he has lost most of the HP from this TC. And Pete doesn't have wood for a new TC. He's gonna get Loom. But look at this, he's not actually gonna have, uh... I mean, <laughs> Yupe is even using his scout to kill the TC. Voyagers are coming back, I think they might want to repair, but this is a lost cause. Even if uh, Pete repairs this... No, they're just dropping off food. And they cannot even hop in, because the TC is in flames. And there goes the TC, and unlike in the previous attempt, Pete is not going into Feudal Age here, and we do have the Militia's opening. So, as I said, look at this for Gods. And this is why Gods can be super fun here. Cheaper Militia's and having the free Loom gives you just enough that you don't have to mine any gold, apparently, to get the Man at Arms upgrade. Now, if you add four Militia's, you need some kind of gold. So I feel like this fourth Militia shouldn't be here. But yeah, free Militia's and Man at Arms, you can squeeze in just fine. That's... A nice thing to remember in goldless maps. Um, yeah, fine, I guess. Yupe is gonna go for the second douche very soon, and <laughs> apparently Kamigawa knows it's coming, and he's gonna do some contingency walls here in this one. This is different from the previous attempt. He's just gonna fully wall himself here, just to make sure that Yupe cannot douche him. Meanwhile, for Pete Martel, apparently he's sticking with Feudal Age in this one, because... There isn't going to be any town centers for him anytime soon. Honestly, this might not just be the only douches you see this evening. Uh, Voyagers are being pulled uh, from this. And here come the man at arms. So, what's the next step for you, Pe? I mean, it's not super challenging to bash your way through these walls. Like, you can just knock down the house very fast, and I'm not sure if uh, Kamigawa is going to have all the wood to repair this. Meanwhile, uh, apparently some villagers isolated over here, man at arms are coming in, and I wouldn't really call Pete's e-coefficient, but remember, in the second half of the previous game, Pete's role was clear. Just distract Yupe and Ruben's stock until Kamigawa can boom, and unlike in the previous game, right now Kamigawa has a free boom! He's keeping the gate open! No! Oh my god, that was a so big mistake from both sides. First of all, Pete was running into the TC, or into the base of Kamigawa, and Ruben Stock was in the gate. If he just stops there, then he o keeps the gate open and the villagers walk in and douche uh, Kamigawa. That was a massive mistake from Ruben Stock. I'm not sure if he was looking at that screen at that moment. But the thing is that if he keeps the gate open, Kamigawa could have been in big trouble and Pete almost could have killed his uh, teammate. Anyways, as I said, I'm not sure if um, Kamigawa has a good enough wood income to keep this table up for a huge amount of time. Other thing that you could do is try to knock down that gate, that's also pretty fast. And uh, what Rubenstock needs right now is just Spearman on all of his Kree resources. And just walk it in. And here comes a tower from Rubenstock, just to make sure that you cannot actually repair that counter tower coming in as well. But this is distracting Kamigawa as well. And, like, this is costing a lot of wood for Kamigawa, by the way. Here come the scouts, but it's not like the scouts will decide this fight, because there is enough spears to take this fight by far. In fact, the best thing that Kamigawa could do is uh, take down the spears with the tower himself. And 
Look at all the damage that's being done. Uh, house deleted here. I wonder if you can squeeze in a TC over there. I don't think so. And honestly, think about it this way. Rubenstock almost managed to keep the gate open. And that could have allowed him to get inside and get a Dushin on Kamigawa. Right now, Kamigawa isn't really in a good shape, though. I mean, his eco is very, very, very massy. And Ruben's stock is pretty much fine. It's 12 villagers on food from Ruben. Only 10 from Kamigawa. So, yeah, Kamigawa is fine for a time being. And what's the plan? Another tower comes in here. Let's see if uh, Kamigawa has access to stone. Yes, he does. But he doesn't actually have the stone right now. Spearmen are a bit mispositioned. Uh, quick walls are coming in. Is it Viper or is it Rubenstock? That is the question. And uh, you know what this means if this tower goes up. I mean, Kamigawa still doesn't have the stone to counter tower this one. And uh, is this tower actually... Or is this TC actually able to range the TC? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure if this is actually possible, but it is going to deny some farming space, for sure. With Fletching? No, Fletching doesn't actually give uh, it extra range, just extra damage. Yeah, I think it's too far away. Anyways, I like this approach from Pete. I really like this approach, and I feel like the previous game that just crashed was just a lot more entertaining. Yeah, it's missing. It's not close enough. So... Basically what Pete did was like, okay, screw fighting in the middle, I'm just gonna move outside and get a TC up over there. And this douche is just not gonna work. It's not over yet, but I feel like the previous game was just way more spectacular. But, don't worry guys. In case you are uh, scared that Ryupa is gonna stop, I'm gonna tell you, that's not the case. He's probably going to destroy these walls, delete it and replace it very soon. He needs some stone to do that, though, which is not something that he's mining at the moment. Meanwhile, looking at the population, Pete is at 24 and just going up to Feudal Age. This is the drawback of Pete's play here. He's going to need a lot of time to recover because he didn't have food eco, so he had a lot of TC idle time. Rubenstock at 34, and honestly, this is where it gets interesting. Rubenstock is close to clicking up to Castle Age. He's mining gold now on the outside. And uh, if you look at Kamigawa, he is very, very far away. No, um, town centers don't benefit from fletching. They get bonus damage, but they don't actually get um, extra range. That would be crazy, because that would mean 9 range town centers with Bracer. And Pete Martel says, I'm gonna avenge the previous game. I'm just gonna avenge the previous game and <laughs> vote this one off. You, Rubenstock is already out though, so it's fine. And he has a sneaky mining camp over here, so it's not something that Pete could actually notice. But, ah, uh, the revenge of Pete Martel here. I mean, this is just game number one essentially, but this is so cheesy. So cheesy. And as I said, sure, Kamigawa is alive, but look at those resources. He's outside, but 154 food in the bank with zero military. And there is a chance that Yupe is just going to douche him again. In fact, what Yupe could also do is yeah, either mine stone or just make a market and buy some. Like you can sell your wood, buy some stone. Not efficient, but it works as well. And in the meanwhile, that's going to be douche again. And the thing is that Kamigawa might not actually get up to Castle Age. So, sure, in this attempt, they managed to save Pete from getting destroyed. But in the meanwhile, Kamigawa didn't have that free boom. Oh yeah, he's he's in Dark Age. That's a good point. You, you kind of forget about players being in Dark Age at 20 minute game time. Right? Anyways, Pete is also going to do double layer walls here. So, yeah, that has to be stone being mined, but there's already enough stone for Yupe, and here it goes. Would you look at that? And, as I said, oh, Kamigawa actually the house foundation over there, but that's not enough. That DC is close enough, and as I said, Kamigawa is just clicking up to Castle Age, so he's gonna have to keep that TC alive. I feel like this TC from Yupe is just a bit too late. 
Yupe is floating a lot of wood and uh, he didn't have stone for quite a time. If he starts mining stone faster, he could have dropped this TC faster and potentially prevent Castlage. In this case, I'm not sure if he can stop uh, Kamigawa from getting up to Castlage, but Kami knows what's coming. He's just gonna stonewall himself on the outside. Now, remember something. They might think that Rubenstock never managed to get outside because they just walled it off. But in reality, Rubenstock is out and he has a TC coming up here. And what this is basically is just a free boom. Here comes the ink rush though. Apparently, Pete Martel isn't giving up on this easily. In fact, he was dropping towers left and right while I wasn't looking. There is going to be a tower coming up here as well to harass Rubenstock near tower. So Pete is also going to play very, very cheesy in this one. 50% HP remaining for his TC, but there is uh, enough wood for Kamigawa to repair this one until he gets up to Castle Age. So yeah, this TC drop was just a bit too late from Yupe. If he was on stone a bit earlier, it could have been way better. Anyways... For Rubenstock, he could just drop a Siege Workshop and mango this down if he really wants to. He is going to be on two TCs and uh, there is also stable out here. A few knights like this could cause disaster. And this game isn't as cheesy as uh, the previous attempt was. But I feel like Sugomi is winning this one a bit more convincingly because here in this case we don't have Kamigawa being able to carry this. And apparently that TC might actually go down pretty fast. Quick wars are going to happen, but I wouldn't say that Pete and Kamigawa has a lot of space to work with. In fact, they might run out of wood, because there is going to be no wood left to chop very very soon over here. Um, the stable is still up, so Kamigawa could actually go for knights here, that's something not to forget. But meanwhile Pete is outside, and let's see what Suomi does to stop these towers. A few knights here would probably clean this one up quite nicely as well. So that would be an option as well. Here in this one, a castle being dropped to get some throwing X-Men out and deal with the Spearman. And let's see how Pete is doing. Pete is still very far, very far away, but his eco is very unbalanced. Here it goes. Villagers rushing that tower down, I believe. Not sure if this is going to be very efficient, but Mangos are killing wheels from Kamigawa. Kami is down to 38 Villagers, Pete is down to 34. And... Uh, what now? What are these villagers gonna do? Are they just gonna fight? Apparently they're just gonna fight. Now, the problem is that there is some knights and the spearmen are completely mispositioned. Um, still, Yupe could garrison the TC and kill that knight while simultaneously repairing his teammates uh, Mangano. But Yupe didn't have any gold, so he cannot do the repairs, unfortunately, for him. But they need some more spears to this one because, as I said, the knights could cause a lot of headache over there. Meanwhile, knights should be able to deal with this one over here, and uh, we're going to have another very glorious feudal age time for uh, Yupe, apparently that is going to be like a 29 minutes feudal. Okay, so the towers are going down here, and uh, a reminder, Rubenstock is the only player who is on two TCs, which is going to pay off in the long run even though he has six villagers on food, which is not enough to make two TCs working, but don't know what this watcher is doing here, but now it's dead. Yeah, Yupe has no gold to repair, I know. In fact, Yupe doesn't really have any resources to work with. But we have some knights around here that could cause chaos in uh, Pete Martel's base. And there is a siege workshop, so there could be some mangoes coming out here to destroy this TC. Uh, still, I feel like um, the lack of pikemen for Rubenstock could hurt quite massively. Because they still cannot deal with those knights. And uh, I feel like now that this castle is up, even though the eco is way better for Suomi, the thing is that I feel like Pete and Kami might still be able to pull this one off. Because unlike in the previous game, now their knights are a bit more impactful, I believe. And also, Pete is uh, a bigger factor in this game as well. In comparison to the previous one. Anyways, Rubenstock is not going to see that town center being dropped over there. And I feel like the biggest uh, benefit that Suomi is getting from this, as we have a pretty nice TC spot over here. So the biggest benefit here for Suomi could be that Rubenstock is a relatively safe boom on the outside. This is a TC that hasn't been scouted up until to this point, and Pete is going to realize what's going on. Dropping quite a lot of uh, outpost arenos. 
And this is something that uh, Kamigawa could go for and try to assault. Here, this is pretty safe for Yupe. And uh, in the meanwhile, Beat is losing quite a lot of Voyagers to the Manganos here, because one thing that... Uh, ROR, well not ROR because Kamigawa is the only ROR, wait no, actually Pete is playing for ROR as well, so I could say ROR, but one thing that Italy doesn't have is a lot of wood to chop, and uh, meanwhile, Knights did break in here, killed some villagers, but the Volov has been completed, and uh, apparently Pete really wants to play for towering all the wood lines that are possible, I just want to give a shout out to Pete's vision on the map, look at that, he sees the majority of the map and he's just spamming outposts everywhere, he legit wants to wall off every attempt to, to, to chop through. But in the meanwhile, they don't really have a lot of space to work with themselves. There is a second TC coming up here for Kamigawa, so he's slowly going, getting there. But at this point, Ruben Stock's boom is pretty convincing, I would say. And oh, Yupe is going Castle Age, indeed. He's going Castle Age and uh, he doesn't have the stone to actually drop a castle himself. Partially because Pete is going to go for that mine. There is a reason why this map is called Chaos Pit, you know. And in the meanwhile, as I said, it could benefit quite massively for Suomi that there is a huge boom working for Ruben Stock. I mean, technically, he could spam villagers from uh, 1, 2, 3, 4... No, it's actually just 3 TCs for now, but there is a fourth one coming up. So... It could be a 4 TC boom and, you know, gods can snowball a game pretty fast. And even though Kamigawa has a pretty good counter unit lineup to gods, he just has 41 eco. And uh, last but not least, Pete only has uh, 1 TC and he's still feudal with 35 villagers. Yupe is castle with 42. That's a nice snipe over there on top of the Manganol. And uh, Yupe could lose villagers here quite rapidly. So that Voyager count could equalize very, very soon. Yupe is trying to chop outside as fast as he can. By the way, he could drop a second town center if he really wants to. So, dropping a second TC would actually be a decent move, I would say. Not sure where he could drop it, though. Like, the problem is that they cannot chop through right now, because uh, Pete is actually dealing with this one. And they don't have anything to protect the mangoes with that could actually knocks through the walls and towers, because mangoes could kill this easily, but the knights are sniping them down quite fast, and oh boy. Oh boy. Anyways, in the end, it's still a better Voyager count for Yupe and he's already Castle Age. We do have Castle Age coming in for Pete Martel. And I can tell you that for Pete Martel, the first step that he's going to do is get Guard Tower. Because Manganos kill Watchtowers, but not Guard Towers. Yupe is going to drop his TC on the outside. And I feel like the outside control is just better for uh, Suomi right now. But in the meanwhile, we have a free TC boom for Kamigawa as he's totally stabilizing. He's 54 Voyagers, but... Rubenstock is already 89. Rubenstock could just have a massive boom here. And gods can flood the game very fast. In fact, look at Rubenstock's resources. He is gonna go imp very soon. We're gonna have a doubt TC over here that's just going to be stopped. And meanwhile, for Pete, nice and convenient 37 minute castle age time for him. As uh, he could easily take this fight with his Voyager because his Inca wills with plus one, plus one in comparison to no armor or no attack upgrades for Rubenstock's will. Not sure why Rubenstock is attacking there, by the way. Some nice kills here. This is important to point out, because Kamigawa is potentially sending villagers to the farms, and uh, farms that aren't being used will actually be targeted by villas at some point, when their own farms run out. So, they will walk down here, and will get killed by knights. Look at Rubenstock, 95 villagers... Uh, Five villagers on stone, but more importantly, he's going imp. And an imp here from Rubenstock could quickly mean that uh, he could just drop a castle basically anywhere on the map. Could be the safest on the outside, and we have archer ranges. Archer ranges? 
are we going to see something like hand cannons against the throwing axeman? I feel like since Kamigawa is gonna have uh, one castle worth of production for Castle Age throwing X-Men, Rubenstock could easily flood this one with Huskars without being the danger of losing a fight. I mean, the numbers aren't there for Kamigawa. And by the time he gets to Hand Cannoneers, he could have gotten up to like 20 Huskars, I believe. Anyways, we do have uh, Stonewall coming up here for Kamigawa, Stonewall as well for Pete Martel. But that doesn't necessarily matter, I would say, as, uh, yeah, nothing is being produced, so hand cannoneers are actually legit. We have Yupes stonewalling the right side, but we have a foothold from Pete Martel, but is this foothold just going to be a disaster? Apparently it will be, and these voyagers are completely trapped. So, Pete wanted to go forward, get a sneaky Barax out, so he can actually harass these voyagers with a few egos. But that's just not gonna work. Voyager's trying to take the best of the fight that they can. But that's really not going to work. And uh, probably Yupe is just gonna vote this one entirely in. So this Barax isn't really going to be a factor. There is still a stable out here, but the Ram is knocking it down. Apparently Yupe um, is not using it anymore. Still, look at the resources for Rubenstock. Imagine if he... Well, first of all, he could slink his uh, teammate, I believe. Get some resources to Yupe. And I think that's the biggest difference. Rubenstock and Kamigawa are pretty much... You can consider them somewhat even, even though Rubenstock is a confident lead. But you, um, there could be a chance for Kamigawa to catch up. But Yupe has a massive lead over Pete Martel. Pete is uh, still on two TCs. I think Yupe is uh, playing with three already. Let's see. One, two, three. Yep. And his Persian thesis as well working for him. Anyways, um, Archer Armor is coming in here for Ruben stock, but I don't see chemistry. So he might have forgotten about chemistry here. I still don't know what's happening here. And why isn't he... Like, Ruben stock could just flood the entire map with Huskars right now. And there wouldn't be anything that uh, Kamigawa can do. Kamigawa is like 12 throwing X-Men, come on. If you just have 20-25 Huskars, you snowball this one extremely fast. Anyways, Yupe getting a Brax out here. This is Snow... or Snow... Ward, it's Ward off. Um, from both sides. Okay. Kamigawa is just gonna force wall this one. And we have Imp coming in as well for Rubenstock. Wait, no, it's Imp for Kamigawa. And we have Swordsman. Long Swords for Rubenstock. Long Swords, but then nothing is being produced on the ranges. Chemistry is just coming in. Why Long Swords now? I don't understand. I don't understand so many things in this game. And I feel like Suomi is throwing away the lead they had. Rubenstock had a massive lead in Eco, and he was just booming up. Now he's actually behind in comparison. Well, not behind, but Kamigawa is going to soon catch up. I mean, yeah, champion hand cannon, but why is that good for you? Like, if it was Halb hand cannon, I would probably say, yeah, it's better. But what do champion hand cannon give you? What do even champion give you overall in this one? I don't know. Yupe is having 12 Voyagers idle constantly. Yeah, that's true. But his eco is very, very messy. We have a pause. Please don't tell me there was a drop again. But nope, there isn't. So, let's hope it's not the pause bug. <clears throat> let's really hope it's not the pause bug. So yeah, basically at this point... I feel like if Rubenstock just went for a castle, um, get uh, Anarchy, get five Barracks out, he could have just flooded the map with Huskars. Huskars run in here, they kill this. Then you can get two Petards out, blast through the walls, get 20 Huskars in here, and that's pretty much GG. And Throwing Axemen are slower to stop, like, Throwing Axemen are very slow compared to Huskars. So they will not actually catch up very fast in this. Um, I'm getting concerned here. Okay, it's continuing. Good. 
Yeah, I do agree. Normally, I don't recommend who scars against throwing X-Men, but the numbers advantage could have been so big for Rubenstock. And, uh... The other thing is that throwing X-Men are slow. You just run past them, run into the eco, and if you get 10 who scars in here, Kamigawa is dead. <laughs> Meanwhile, this is a, like MBL style outpost rushing that we're seeing over here from both sides. N no castle, by the way, from Rubenstock at this point, and he still has the ranges out. Okay. We are seeing hand cannons on these ranges, and he's gonna make a push here. Now, this is actually intriguing because if he can blast through here, he could hit the core of Kamigawa's eco, and it's actually a smart idea. Because um, if you attack here, there's multiple layers to go through. If you attack here and kill this castle, everything is open for killing. Right side is walled off, left side is not walled off though from uh, Suomi, something to pay attention for. And Pete Martel is catching up in Voyager count, he's booming on 40 CCs, he was untouched for the majority of the time. And that gives him time to slowly crawl back into the game, I would say, after a kind of disastrous uh, start for him. And uh, here come the Bombard Cannons with the Hand Cannons. That is not going to go up, my friend. That is going to be a 63% castle denied over there. And apparently Halberdier Hand Cannon is the name of the game here for Rubenstock. There come the Knights. I feel like this was a bit of a premature attack here from Rubenstock. He doesn't have the Habadiers to deal with this one, although these are Imp Habadiers, so they might be able to kill the Knights pretty easily over here. <clears throat> also, Hand Cannons actually do pretty decent damage against Knights. But still, even if this castle goes up, Bombard Cannons will just melt them almost instantly. And Hand Cannons can also escape. Imp Privilege coming in here as well for Yupe. And... Uh, Looking at the 400 stone he has in the bank, okay, there is Cavalier for Kamigawa, so there is a need for a lot more Habadiers for Rubenstock. He has enough for a castle. I think this will be a moment for Rubenstock to drop a castle and get Perfusion very soon, so he can spam those Habadiers out very fast. Because that's a lot of Cavalier to deal with, but if it's only Cavalier, I mean, Gothic Habadiers with Perfusion will just melt them. Meanwhile, you also have quite a lot of hand cannons on the outside. I feel like uh, Rubenstock just can't decide what he wants to do with this game. So, he can decide if he wants to push in the middle, want to push on the outside, what units to go for. And we do have uh, Bearded Axe coming in here for Kamigawa. Not sure if he went for Chivalry, but Bearded Axe is a move towards throwing Axemen. It's not like these Cavaliers will achieve anything though. And this is dangerous because the Bombard Cannons could threaten other buildings here. Meanwhile, right side is pretty peaceful, same for the left side. This just tilts me so hard for Rubenstock. He could snowball this one. And this is basically the story for the last 10 minutes. He has a massive lead. 64 military compared to 21. And he's not using it. Because it's scattered all across the map, not doing anything. He's kind of refusing to invest into a push. Floating massive amounts of resources. Not having a castle when he could get those insane gothic tracks. And now he's losing his hobbit ears. But there is actually an opening over there. Imagine if Rubenstock had Huskars. How fun it would be. Just a few Huskars in here. And uh, half of the eco is dead. The quick walls are nice. And Rubenstock is going to lose some villagers over here at his starting base. But it's not the end of the world. Yupe needs to be a factor very soon as well, though. He's up to Imperial, and we are going to see Cavalier coming up from him pretty soon. Throwing Axemen, killing the Habadiers, because the hand cannon support is missing. I feel like Suomi is having a massive lead, like a huge lead. And uh, Rubenstock isn't uh, having his best day so far, because he's just letting that uh, lead fade away. Because every moment this game drags longer the better chances are for Italy. In fact, if you take a look at Pete, he managed to reboom, he's going Imp. This is an even game. Suomi managed to... basically make a game that was like 70-80% of one for them into an even game. Just because this wasn't uh, won when Rubenstock reached Imperial. He wanted to go hand can or yeah, hand cannons instead of just snowballing this one with massive amounts of Huskars. He just needs to get 20 Huskars into the eco here. And uh, it's pretty much over. 
Now, Yupa needs to be a factor as well. We are going to have a castle here on a Jurkat. That is the plan for Rubenstock. That also could have been an idea, but yet again, nothing to protect the hand cannons and onagers from the Cavaliers. Because you don't have the Harbody numbers. And why don't you have the Harbody numbers? Because you produce Harbodiers slowly. If only you would have a unique upgrade that allows you to produce units faster on the barracks. And, and at this point, Kamigawa is coming in with more and more Cavaliers. Yupe is also getting his Cavalier number up though. But Paladin is coming in on both sides. We'll also have Fletching for Yupe. So Commander on crossbows feels like a possibility. And we have an Onager cut on the left side with quite a lot of uh, hand cannons as well. But again, no defense against uh, Cavalry. The castle is up. We have no trap coming in here for Pete Martel. This is, by the way, just game number one in a best of five. All on this map between these players. Are you hyped for this evening? Because I am. Anyways, Incas technically have redemption to convert onagers with. And this guy is like Neo from Matrix, just missing every shot that's actually going his way. Look at this. This guy is just invincible. Meva, castle coming up on the left side. And we also have some barracks up. Oh boy. Kamigawa doesn't know about this. Kamigawa doesn't know about this. And this is going to be quite a lot of vultures getting killed. Rubenstock now has the smallest vulture count, by the way. But Cavaliers are galloping into the eco of Pete Martel. And uh, that is not good. That's going to be a lot of dead voyagers, potentially. In the middle, there is also more and more chaos. Just look at the minimap, how messy this is. Or hand can even a good counter to Axemen? I think they should be. Not sure, but... Uh, technically, it should be a hard counter. Yeah. Did I mention that I don't like that you have your hand cannoneers unprotected against cavalry here? I might have done it, because this is exactly what's happening. I mean, Habadiers are slowly coming in. Perfusion would be so helpful for Ruben's stock. Look at all the pikemen queued up. Okay, this is something I want to talk about. Because one of the things that uh, I had with Nikov coaching is that he said that I lost one of my games that we reviewed just because I had the resources but didn't have the production buildings. That's also the case for Ruben's stock. Floating 4,000 wood, but he doesn't have the production to spam Habadiers everywhere. He should have 10 more barracks here by now. Anyways, this is still fine for Suomi, I believe. I feel like their lead might be just uh, too big for Italy to come back from. Because there is Paladins here. And the problem is that Pete doesn't have any military. Pete didn't... Pete did have time to reboom. But Pete didn't have time to get a good army up. Slingers are coming in here, though. And that could change a lot of things. Because Slingers will actually counter the majority of the stuff that gods have. Meanwhile, left side, there is going to be Habadiers against the Paladins. By the way, the left side for Suomi is wide open. And they don't even care about this, so Paladins could run into their pressure straight very, very soon. Which would be a disaster. At this point, every player is around 140 Voyagers still. As we have a Habadier play here from Pete Martel. Paladins are still running in his eco, and it's not like he has a lot of map control. In fact, Paladins are everywhere killing uh, his stuff. Meanwhile, around here, Suomi base seems peaceful, but as I said, Paladins can run into their base pretty soon. Some quick walls are coming up. This is actually a smart quick wall, and this is a very easy choke point to wall off. Meanwhile, we still have the Paladins running in, and Pete is dropping in population quite massively. I don't think that uh, Kamigawa will be able to carry a 2v1, because it's Frankish Paladins versus Persian Paladins, which is pretty much even. And uh, there's a lot of hand cannon and Habadier support coming from Rubenstock. And soon gold could be running out for these players because they are losing the corner. So Suomi is going to snowball this one at the end, but this was way longer than it should have been. I feel like Rubenstock could have just snowballed this a lot faster. But they went for uh, the safer, more passive approach, I would say. And they still managed to win it. So after a crazy attempt in game number one that didn't actually finish because of a game crash, we do have another crazy game one here. I feel like the start of the previous attempt was just better, but this also turned out to be just one hell of a game. And we are in for at least two more of these on this map with these players. That's just great. I don't care if this is going to last until like uh, 
2 a.m. or 3 a.m. for me. Doesn't matter. What matters is that this is, as I said, probably going to be part of AoE 2 history. Just because these two players are, uh, for Suomi, are the most chaotic players out there, basically. And they are playing on the most chaotic map. So, yep, at this point, Pete is just dead. 77 population, losing the corner, and he has nowhere to run. This one is walled off. He cannot go back here. Kamigawa is going to call it. And Suomi brings in their first victory. I just want to give you a moment to look at the minimap. Welcome to Chaos Pit. <clears throat> well, yeah, if you want to grab popcorn, this might be the time to do that. So, Katie's Yupe actually had a positive KD despite the fact that he was douching and running around with Voyagers. But, you know, in the end, Yupe was killing with Paladins, so it's understandable. Pete was just always the punching bag in this game. 1-4 to four KD. Lost 46 buildings. Pete was just a meat shield for Kamigaba, but he wasn't enough. And, yeah, basically by the end, Rubenstock essentially outboomed Kamigaba. Especially that 16,000 extra wood is massive, although he didn't really use it, so shame on Ruben for that. And just look at those uptimes. Feudal Age from Yupe, 29 minutes. Castle Age from Pete, 37. Ugh, that, well, that was crazy. That was crazy. All right, we're going back to the lobby because we have more. So, Persians are gone. Next up, I would say Byzantines for you, Pet. Okay, who wants to bet if uh, there is going to be Byzantines here for Suomi and have another TC drop? Because that's another TC drop save. Then you can go for... Uh, Spanish with TC drop, I would say, because of the faster building. No biz? Well, technically, biz would be great for douching. If they want to douche, that's probably the safe to choose. <clears throat> because let's see that this was the two strongest combos. They still have Incas available. That's a strong uh, opening, I would say. Then what else do we have? What else do we have for cheesy strategies? I don't know, man. I feel like Incas will be used, Byzantines will be used by Suomi in this. Uh, what other sieves do we have? Aztecs could be an interesting one because they start with extra gold. I don't think it's going to be a pretty straightforward pick for them. But Aztecs is a safe to watch out for on this map. Um, other than that, Koreans, Spanish, of course, for towers, is one of the sieves. Yeah, probably these are the ones like Incas, Spanish, Koreans. Bulgarians is a good idea as well, because you get the free Man at Arms upgrade, so you can play around with that thought as well. Even though I think you can only pop out two militias, but still, two Man at Arms as an opening isn't really bad, and it actually gives you a pretty good chance. Lithuanians at Fast Rush? Maybe, but I mean, the Fast Rush alone isn't actually a precise build. It's just an opening. That you can actually move uh, on from without losing any eco or without sacrificing any of your future eco. And then play something uh, like a fast castle behind it or uh, rush into archers build behind it. So yeah, strong tower sieves is what I expect from Subomi over here. Maybe Byzantines for douching as well in this one. Here we go, we'll have game number two in a matter of moments.
okay, according to UPS stream they're launching right now. Um, it's actually cheating to look at UPS stream and bet on the civilization that they are going to select because I know you guys are doing that. Indeed, UPS with Teutons and uh, Rubenstock with Mongols. This is a fun combo. Mongols do have a great hunting bonus, which makes them a legit sieve for uh, Chaos Pit. Teutons. Technically, you can douche with them, you can trush with them, but Pete has Byzantines, and I'm really curious at what Pete wants to do with Byzantines. I mean, uh, just having Byzantines could be Pete Martel also trying to get a douche out, or if not, it could be a Spear, Spear and Skirm Tower play. Because Spear and Skirm Tower on this map can be very strong. Alright. Let's go. So, welcome everybody. This is going to be game number two. In a best of five between Yupe and Rubenstock facing off against Pete Martel and Kamigawa. In AoE Olympics... This is going to be the semi-finals on the 2v2 Chaos Pit. We'll have uh, Team Italy with uh, Pete Martel in Byzantines in purple. We'll have uh, yellow for Kamigawa in uh, Khmer. And Rubenstock is playing Mongols in red for Suomi. And we'll have Yupe as Teutons in blue. So let's see what we have. We open with a pretty early scout fight over here that I think is actually won by Yupe. He has one more HP, and that is going to be, in the end, one more HP remaining for Yupe. That was actually pretty close. He was the one who actually ended down his shot, and look at these feels good man berries. You gotta love these berry patches here. The only concern is that it's very, very close to your opponent, but this is actually a pretty nice mill spot. So... With Mongols, you're probably just gonna keep pushing in deer, and Rubenstock is gonna go for the chop outside. Let's see what Yupe does, and Yupe, again, is not going to try and chop outside. Makes me believe that there is a chance for a super aggressive play in the middle again, as he's probably going to delay... Mm, it depends. If they are consistent, I would probably see Yupe TC dropping uh, Pete Martel over here. Because it is likely that Pete is going to play Spear, Skirm and Tower. And that is something that would actually get through Quick Walls. So you want to eliminate that threat from the game. And meanwhile, Kamigawa is probably playing Scouts. Something that you can uh, defend against quite nicely with Quick Walls. And indeed, having 4 on Wood for Yupe, if that's a 5th Voyager, this is a TC drop again. Here it goes. It's going to be a TC drop. Meanwhile, by the way, Rubenstock is trying to delay the deer push here from Pete Martel. And he's successful at doing so. So, nice micro so far over there from Rubenstock, but he's not pushing in his own deer at the moment. Is he actually laming deer? Apparently he is. As, meanwhile, Pete is uh, killing the deer, so it's not actually getting lamed away. Byzantine buildings have more HP, yes. But... Not by a huge margin. They will have a slightly better HP. But if Yupe keeps repairing his TC, that's something that uh, Pete would actually have to do as well. So indeed, Byzantines have more HP on their TC, but you still cannot get away without repairing. I think the only douching save or only save that can get away in the case for douche with uh, no repairs is Persians. Anyways, chop outside coming up here from both Italians in this. And there is a chance that Ruben Stock is just gonna go for a pretty early feud late time and scouts opening. He didn't really push in a lot of deer early on, so I don't think this is going to be better than 20 pop. Maybe he can squeeze in a 19 pop, but judging by the direction of the deer running, which is probably just the worst possible deer push I've ever seen, uh, I am thinking that this is probably 20 pop at best. Here it goes. And apparently, Yupe is going to choose Kamigawa as his target. He's choosing the scouts player, and Kamigawa is like, 
Leave me alone, dude. I just wanna play this game. Terror with the raid. Thanks, everybody. Welcome, everybody, from Clown Cup. This is something that's going to be a legendary matchup. Rubenstock and Cupid on Chaos Pit. You better stick around because this is crazy. Um, we already had quite a lot of douches in the previous attempts. This is a new one as well from Yupe. And uh, I really wonder why Teutons are considered a good douching sieve here. Because I'm not so certain on that. Like, what makes Teutons a better douching sieve than other sieves? Like, I would massively rank Biz ahead of Teutons. Higher capacity. People are smart. People are smart in here, indeed. But there's only 10 Voyagers garrisoned inside, and I think the attack is actually capped, or the damage output is actually capped. So, you cannot actually capitalize on 25 Voyagers, but indeed, being able to garrison 25 walls is nice, and as I said, this is a very good meal spot. Overall. So, at this point, what is Kamigawa's plan? Oh no! Now, the thing is that he can't, he has to keep this TC alive, because he's 50% towards Fuel Age, he can't just allow that TC to go down, but that's going to cost a lot of wood to repair, and if he's not cautious with his Vulgers, they might even get caught in the crossfire. Meanwhile, on the other side, what do we have? We have uh, what appears to be 19 Pop Scouts from Rubenstock. Pete Martell is probably going Spear and Skirm in this one, with Byzantines, alongside Towers. Yupe is getting housed here, and indeed, he can actually capitalize on the larger capacity of the TCs. I learned something new today. Teutons are actually a great douching save, I didn't know that. But considering that Suomi still has uh, Byzantines available, probably next game is going to be douche as well. Alright, so Feudal Age is there for Kamigawa, but it's not like he's going to keep this TC alive for a huge amount of time. I guess he's just trying to buy some time until he chops through, but he's not even close to chopping through at this point. So he's probably just gonna have to run for his life again. And in the meanwhile, look at Pete actually being scared of the douche. Because they know exactly that once this TC is down from uh, Kamigawa, Yupe is going to start moving up and douche Pete here. Right? Yeah. Or just gonna pull the Voyagers and take a fight here. Kamigawa trying to rush up a stable so he can survive, but there is no escape from here. Okay, Matt's time. 15 villagers for Yupe here, 20 and a stable for Kamigawa. I would say that for Yupe, just vote this in. Vote this in so the scouts cannot actually go out in the middle, and Kamigawa would be trapped over here with no space. I feel like it's actually a mistake from Yupe not to vote this one in. If he was it in with like double layer polycides, Kamigawa scouts don't do anything. Because they can't even exit to the middle. So I feel like that was a bit of a misplay from Yupe, but he's busy with other things. And by other things, I mean douching his opponent. And I feel like you can still squeeze in a TC here, or maybe you can get it up over here. And you also have scouts coming in here from Rubenstock helping quite massively. Oh boy. This is one of those games again. And let's see... Or are we gonna have a TC spot? This should be fine. Oh, it's blocking! Pete is blocking that TC spot. That was genius from Pete. And he's doing the same thing with his Vulture. That was, again, beautiful. Same thing here being done. Vulture is just blocking the foundation from the town center. But it's going to start. His own Vulture's are blocking him right now. And it's going to start. And it should be within range, indeed, the TC from... Pete is firing, and that means that Yupe can also fire on it in this very moment. Anyways, I feel like the only misplay that Suomi did here is that they didn't wall this in. Because right now Kamigawa can use those tables. If he just walled this one in here, Kamigawa would have nothing to do. By the way, Kamigawa doesn't have a TC, so he's going to be in a similar situation as uh, Pete was in the previous game. Yes, he's chopping through slowly and he will build a TC on the outside, but he's not going to have any eco behind it. Because he's going to be stuck at 20 villagers for a large amount of time. And meanwhile, Rubenstock is just happily booming away with this one. He's already outside. If Rubenstock sends the villagers in here to trap uh, Pete, and more importantly Kamigawa. Oh, the possibilities would be endless with this. 
Imagine if Yupe trapped the Kamigawa from this side and Rubenstock comes in here and walls this one off and makes a tower. That would be GG there because there is nowhere to run for Kamigawa. Anyways, Scouterinos are in nice quick walls from Rubenstock over there and uh, up until the point where the scouts actually bash their way through. This was a good play from Rubenstock but he still has the scouts out here so he can actually win this fight pretty decisively and losing a villager for Rubenstock isn't really hurting him as much. Uh, like, yeah, he loses one villager, sure, but Kamikawa isn't able to produce wills, so at this point the villager lead is still pretty convincing. TC goes down here from uh, Pete and uh, Pete still hasn't managed to chop through and apparently Rubenstock is not even trying to deny that. I feel like he could have tried denying, but he's not gonna go for it. Meanwhile, we do have some spears out and Pete is gonna try and drop a tower in the face of Rubenstock. The style is similar to the previous game from both players. In this one, Pete is going to try and delay Rubenstock from actually doing anything useful. Because uh, Rubenstock is the one that's very dangerous. He's the one that's doing a scouts into whatever type of a build. And uh, that should be an early cast age for him. Knights could happen pretty soon. And uh, what is this uh, house for? I think Yupa is just gonna pull his wheels and knock this tower down. That could be a decent idea. Anyways, it appears that Pete is outside and soon Kamigawa will be able to chop outside as well. These villagers are walled off, so are the berry villagers. More or less, there's actually an opening between the berries. And indeed, as I said, villagers will be pulled to take this fight. And uh, what's important for Sumi right now is just to keep uh, Rubenstock alive. Because Rubenstock is the one who is going to be supposed to carry this one. But yet again, this is not going to be a great fight for Yupe. However, technically he's killing the scouts. Probably the worst possible fight I've ever seen. But Yupe is still going to have essentially even Voyager numbers compared to Kamigawa. Because Kamigawa had so much TC idle time. But yeah, this is uh, more or less turning into slaughter. If only someone had a Spearman here to help. Or if only someone walled this one in so the scouts cannot exit, right? Missing that opportunity to wall this one in um, could actually be game losing for Sugomi because Kamigawa just slaughtered Yupe here. But guess what? Yupe is like, oh shoot, I have more. Nice moves over there from Rubenstock to knock this tower down. Scouts are still coming in here, so they need some sort of a Spearman. To deal with this one because otherwise this is not really going to work. Scouts are on the outside for Rubenstock but they're not really hurting uh, Pete here. They could actually go for the Voyagers of Kamigawa though. Oh man. Oh man. Yupe is gonna drop in Voyager count quite massively and uh, I'm starting to dislike the position of Suomiya more and more. I mean Kamigawa is doing the right thing, just flooding his opponent with scouts, and apparently it's working. It's Khmer farming working for him, and I know I'm very repetitive on this one, but imagine if this was walled in. Kamigawa's scouts would have never killed a villager from Yupe. Yupe is down to 15 villagers because the scouts slaughtered him. I think Pete and Kami might have this, because uh, Yupe is pretty much dead, and looking at Kamigawa, he's going up to Castle Age very soon, Looking at Pete, he's far away, but at least he's fine with Eco, 33 Voyagers. Rubenstock has 39, but he's under pressure, whereas uh, Kamigawa can just boom, basically. So, I feel like it's a massive missed opportunity for Suomi not to just close in Kamigawa over here. Because if they close Kami in here, as long as Kami doesn't chop out, he cannot move into the middle, get some farming space for himself. Either. But at this point... Yupe is at 18 wills. He is pretty much dead. Sneaky villager coming up here from Kamigawa all the way around. And we do have a stone wall on the left. But villagers are already pushing through here for Pete Martel. And where are the scouts at? From Rubenstock? I don't see them anywhere. Scouts are just nowhere to be found. Now, as I said, Castle Age is halfway in for Kamigawa. And uh, there is multiple options for him, but a few elephants here could actually be a pretty nice move, I would say. Meanwhile, Scouterino's coming in, but nothing to deal with those spearmen, so he can't really take this fight. And looking at Rubenstock's resources, 
He has a massively unbalanced eco. He needs a market and buy some food, click up. That is indeed what he's going to do. And uh, up he goes. Now, the mobility of the Mangrai could actually be something that wins the game here. So, Suomi is not completely out of the game yet because Mongols are a really dangerous sieve, especially an open map like this. Just a few Mangrai raids and suddenly their opponents will have no eco. And meanwhile, I don't think the left side will be walled off in time here by Pete. Scouts are coming in at dangerous speed. And uh, we already have a sneaky village route here for Ruben's stock. I don't think this is in time for Pete. Scouts are coming in. Nice quick gate, but gates aren't super, super sturdy. They can just kill the gate and flood in. Indeed, that is going to be minus two villagers here for Pete Marta. But apparently Ruben's stock is the one who has to carry this one. Because... Yupe is pretty much dead. Rubenstock is on the way to castle himself. Free on stone only though, so... It's not going to be an immediate chance to drop a castle and get some Mangarai's out. We might actually see some knights, potentially siege workshops here to try and push Pete's base. Yupe still a 700 score, and I like that Kami is just walling himself off, kind of sacrificing his teammate for his own good. Nice quick calls over there from uh, Pete again. Might sacrifice a few wheels here. But there is two spearmen to defend, so he's fine for the time being. And in the meanwhile, we have knights instead of elephants. And uh, Suomi might be dead. Because Rubenstock is going to lose massive amounts of villagers. And uh, it seems like this douche wasn't good enough. Because this is a win for Italy. Rubenstock is going to go down to something like 35 villagers very soon. His farming space is denied. And indeed, Suomi caused the GG. If only this was walled in and Rubens or Yupe didn't lose 20 villas. The thing is that if this is walled in here, when Yupe had the chance, Kamigawa never moves into the middle with scouts. This means that Yupe can just rush down the towers of uh, Pete and give time for Rubens stock to boom. But after Yupe lost like 20 villagers to the scouts, that's just not gonna happen. And if we take a look at the KDs, Kamigawa strong carry in this one. But look at that. That's where all the villagers died. Just died. I don't think Yupe lost. Um, even if he didn't see the stable, um, he should have thought about walling it in. Because you know that your opponent, it's going to take some time for him to chop outside. If you limit his movement to the inside, you can limit his farming space. You can prevent him from dropping a TC back in the middle again. So, even without the stable, walling those vo uh, villagers in there could have been a very, very good move. Alright. This brings us to game number three. And thanks to the fact that we have had a victory here for Italy, this means that we are going into game number three knowing that there will be at least two more um the stable was fine from kamigawa i believe i feel like the problem was that um suomi had nothing against those scouts so either spear defense at least a few spearmen from um your best stock could have been nice or just walling those in and here we go. So, let's see the civilizations because this is going to be game number three. Yupe going Incas, Rubenstock going Franks. So, ladies and gentlemen, we might not see a Persian douche. Well, we might not see a Persian douche from Suomi to be precise because Pete Martel is picking Persians, and I have a certain feeling about Persians in this one. You know why? Because Kamigawa is Magyars, which is obviously your scout save. The only reason why you would actually pick Persians to accompany Magyars is because you want to douche. So let's see how it turns out. For these players, AOE Olympics, game number three on the semifinals on Chaos Pit, 
with the legendary chaotic players Rubenstock and Yupa on the right side, Incas for Yupa in blue, and we will have Rubenstock and Franks in red. Left side is Italy, represented by Pete Martel in Persians in purple, and yellow for Magyars in Kamikawa. So, let's see. Apparently there was a bit of a pause, but as I said before, I feel like the only reason why you would actually pick Persians to accompany Magyars, which is going to be obviously, obviously your scout sieve, right. is to douche. So, it's very likely that we are going to see a TC draw from Pete Martel. Um, Rubenstock is going to play Franks here. Franks and Magyars are pretty much even with their scouts at the beginning, but uh, Frankie's scouts will be better in middle field age once you get the forging upgrade. Then once Magyars get the bloodlines, it's going to be Magyar sided again. And of course we have Incas and you know, Yupe is going to play Incas. I actually thought that Rubenstock is going to be the Inca player and Yupe plays scouts, but it appears that this more skilled player is going to get this scout build for himself. <clears throat> so, let's see how the build order looks like for Pete, for a douche. He's going to drop his lumber camp over here. Again, as, it, as in the case of Yupe, it's a very strong indication that you're not trying to chop through. If you're not trying to chop through, you're just gonna go pretty much all in in the middle, and that is basically a douche build. So, having this lumber camp over here, this is, by the way, quite efficient. But, well, this is likely to be a douche. There is the rally point still on the wood line, and you wouldn't actually pick Persians here as your archer save, especially considering that there is no gold on this map in the middle. So, you don't go for a traditional archer save, and that means that you either have double scouts with Persians and Magyars, or Persians have to go for a douche. We'll soon find that in a second, but that fifth villager is heading towards the wood line. Pete Martel is going to try and avenge everything that has happened to him in the previous games, and he's gonna do go for his own TC drop. Meanwhile, Yupe with Incas just pushing in the deer right now for himself, chopping through with only three wheels. And we have four wheels from Rubenstock. This is actually surprising from Ruben. Going for four wheels here on Wood instead of just going free. And uh, apparently, that is going to be a sheep that's being lamed here by Pete Martel. I mean, I feel like Pete Martel really wants to punish here. There is no boar on this map to lame, but there's actually some turkeys. So, otherwise it's going to be a pretty peaceful start at the beginning. Free on vote for Kamigawa, which is indicative of a scout's build. And I'm still not sure why Rubenstock is sending four on vote. Technically you can, because you can compensate for your lack of or smaller food income with the faster working belly villagers, so you might still be fine with 4 on wood, but it's a weird approach. Unless it's something completely unique, but still 4 on wood is weird for a scout's build, and I don't think it's going to be anything other than a scout's build. Unless Rubenstock wants to douche with Franks, but I don't think that's really the case. So... We are... Gonna have uh, Loom coming in just now for Pete. That is going to be an 18 pop douche. He's already getting the Voyager up. And then Loom. And apparently he's gonna go for Ruben stock. So he's actually trying to hit this Scouts player. It's actually interesting to look at this difference between the attitudes. When uh, Ruben stock and Yupe did the douche against Pete and Kamigawa, that also had Franks and Incas. Rubenstock and Yupe first went towards the Inca player to prevent an Inca wheel rush. In this case, Pete is gonna do uh, the Scouts player to prevent the Scouts. And look at Rubenstock, he's like, nope. Nope. But he's not going to deny that. And here it goes. This is going to be a douche coming in here. And I wonder what Rubenstock is planning here. Free Voyagers to pull isn't enough. But he's trying to weaken that TC for time being, and he's fighting without Loom! He's fighting without Loom, oh man. He just pulled those Vogers. And, uh, well... Tried to fight without Loom. Didn't work out. Anyways, in the meanwhile, we will have Yupe potentially losing his scout here, because for whatever reason he was running into the TC fire. 
I feel like this could have been auto scouting going wrong. But we'll have a 20 pop up. It would be a 21 pop if the scout was still alive. Both Rubenstock and Yupa lost their scouts, by the way. And let's see how Rubenstock reacts to the douche here. Technically, he has his wood to douche himself. Okay, bold prediction. Do you think it's possible that Rubenstock is just gonna counter douche Kamigawa here? Like, he has the resources to do that, right? He's going to delete the town center, douche Kamigawa, and trade evenly with the town centers. Indeed, that's the plan. That's a genius! Counter douche, here it comes. <laughs> I never see it coming. And honestly, it's actually a good idea, because Pete is douching himself. He's not gonna be up to feudal anytime soon, so he's not a danger right now. But in the meanwhile, they will double in on Kamigawa, and there's a chance Yupe is just gonna go for the wood line and trash this one with Inca Villagers. Feudal Age is just kicking in here for Kamigawa, Barax is up, but it doesn't really matter. And let's see what Pete is going to react. Appropriate reaction from Pete here would be to douche uh, Yupe as an exchange. And apparently, Rubenstock isn't paying attention to his villagers. I dislike this quite a bit because he lost two villagers without a fight. That wasn't great. But anyways, meanwhile we have uh, Kamigawa voling in his own berries to prevent Rubenstock from getting them once the douche is complete. This is some next level mind games and craziness. As I said, five games on this map... Heck, I'm gonna lose my mind. I'm just gonna lose my mind on this map. <laughs> and, yeah, he's just laying his own berries. Okay, meanwhile, we have a trap set here from Rubenstock, and who traps who, asks Ruben here, and uh, he's gonna kill one villager. In the end, Rubenstock has 17 idols right now, and just as always, Kamigawa is gonna run for his life. Still, it's a bit of a problem that Kamigawa has a stable here. A stable behind the walls, by the way, that's actually hard to kill. And those are Magyar scouts that could do a lot of damage to villagers here. And uh, I would love to see some spears from either side. We have the douche coming up here from uh, Pete Martel on the base of Yupe for a change. Who is going to benefit from this one? I feel like um, probably Italy. Because, at this point, as weird as it sounds like, Kamigawa at least is capable of gathering resources, which is not true for the other players. Uh, two of them are fighting in a douche right now, the third one has already douched um, another player. <laughs> How will they stay tonight being crushed and douched to that? Yeah, basically that. And, uh, Rubenstock? Can you fit a TC somewhere around over here? Because Rubenstock will try to do that. He has enough to drop another TC. And we might just see Rubenstock. That's a whole horde of villagers coming in here. Just a whole horde of villas. Meanwhile, we will have uh, Yupe losing his TC here as well. Um, Yupe, on the other hand, doesn't have the wood to actually rebuild his TC. Villagers are being pulled and Yupe is the guy making the towers. Kamigawa is the guy. Look at that. Towered here to prevent chopping through here. And towered here. And oh, look at that. He's trapping them. He's trapping them. This is not the one. It's a trap. This is the one. And indeed, it's a trap. Because these guys aren't going anywhere from here. The only way they actually get out here is if they chop themselves out. Because the towers will prevent chopping to the outside. And I feel like if Yupe actually gets uh, fletching for himself, he could actually range these watchers. The house from Yupe is already coming out. And that means that Kamigawa could be trapped here forever with 18 of his watchers. Rubenstock going in. <laughs> what is this? What is... What am I looking at right now? I cannot say this more than one time, but... Still, when I saw this in the calendar on AoE Zone, I was like, if I don't cast this, I might as well just stop streaming forever, because this is something I should not miss. So, okay, 
Let's see, TC situation. Right now, Yupe doesn't have a town center. Um, Ruben's stock is out. And this could be interesting because Pete is not out yet. And uh, with Pete not being out... The likely scenario... Wait, no, it's Kamigawa who is not out. Pete, of course, isn't out himself. So technically, Suomi can actually just uh, deny all the wood income from uh, the Italians here. If the one tower goes up here for Yupe, he's going to be more than happy to get a tower up here. Now, he still needs to wall this one off because this tower is preventing him from doing so. But yeah, basically what he has to do... And the foundation is gone. The foundation is gone. And this is the foundation that uh, is the appropriate one. <laughs> Look at the gates coming in here. He's not gonna get let these guys out. He's just not gonna let these guys out. Meanwhile, uh, this is actually an issue for uh, Yupe. He forgets about that part and Kamigawa is going to be able to escort his voyagers out. This would have been better if this was walled off completely. Even then, Kamigawa could have escaped here, so... At this point, at least Kamigawa is able to run away. Which is a positive. Uh, meanwhile, some dancing with some gates over here in this one. Yupe apparently trying something, didn't succeed. Um, I would like to point out that we have two players in Feudal Age right now. One of them is Yupe, the other one is Ruben, uh, the other one is Kamigawa. Um, at this point, Pete has a TC. Nothing special. We have a market coming up for Kamigawa to sell that huge amount of uh, wood he has. Ruben stock with Franks. He's still Dark Age, but he's actually getting close to clicking up. Yeah, Ruben is actually doing great, but remember that he hasn't clicked up into Feudal Age, so this is going to decrease. In reality, this is just uh, four less villagers in Feudal. So, still the issue for uh, Italy is going to be that they cannot chop wood anywhere. Because they cannot chop here on the outside, and in the middle, they will soon be pressured by uh, scouts from Ruben's stock. Uh, meanwhile, on the outside, we have uh, a chop through, and this means Yupe gets his town center back. Ah, oh, you gotta love this. And as I said, this is only game number three. If we are lucky, this goes into five games. I, I wanted to start uploading stuff to my YouTube anyways, so this might be one of those series that I will definitely upload. Probably one by one, so I can get some more clickbaity videos out of this one. Meanwhile, I'm not a fan of uh, chopping um, wood right next to these tables, because this makes it dangerous, although you can hop into the towers, so it's fine. Why Kamigawa doesn't build a TC? Um, because he has no wood. Yeah, Kamigawa doesn't have wood and no TC. Feudal Age is in here for Ruben's stock, and this is a moment where he can start making spears, and he should start making spears to deal with those scouts. Otherwise, he could actually die to that. Wheels are overrated, uh, more or less. This is minus four villagers here for you, Pedo. As I said, villager fighting works until someone doesn't bring in the scouts. But, yeah, Ruben's stock... Actually, Ruben's stock is close to clicking up to Castle Age, believe it or not. I think Ruben Stock should just drop a blacksmith here and click up into castle when he can and start making knights. If he starts making knights, this might be over because, yeah, Kamigawa has a few scouts here, but once knights arrive, this is pretty much over here. We have the scouts doing significant damage. They can hop into the towers, by the way. This one is walled off. Nope, it isn't. It's perfect. You are just jumping into a teammate's tower. Perfect Suomi team game over there. And in the end, Yupe is only at 25 voyagers. But I think he's doing his job. He's preventing the opponent from chopping through, and he's slowly booming back. Meanwhile, Kamikawa is only 23 voyagers, still no town centers, so no voyagers, and here's a douche from Pete. Here's a douche from Pete that could actually prevent the Castle Age pickup from Ruben. Um, Ruben has enough to make a blacksmith. And uh, just click up, basically. But he's gonna have to repair this TC. I still believe that he could do that. Just keep repairing, get up to Castle Age, and then you can start making knights. 
or evacuate this place immediately, but notably Rubenstock doesn't have the stone to remake his town center. Another wall off over here from uh, UPEP. And uh, yeah, this one should be walled off here from UPEP because otherwise scouts will actually get out. So what's the plan for Rubenstock? He's not actually picking up. I feel like he should, on the other hand. Market comes in just now, probably for some eco-balancing, as in the second building. Meanwhile, there is more scouts coming up as well for Ruben Stocks. He wants to be more annoying, and he is, oh boy, oh boy. He's killing villagers from Kamigawa, which is exactly what they need, and Kamigawa is down to 23 villagers with no town center. And uh, since there is no town center for him, he's not going to replenish his villagers, meaning that, yeah, he has a few scouts out here that are annoying and killing stuff. But he's not going to be able to replenish army. In fact, if uh, Rubenstock just goes in and kills the weak villagers here from Kamigawa, that's already a massive benefit. Here comes a town center, ladies and gentlemen. So Kamigawa is going to be back up on one TC in this one. Those are Magyar scouts against Frankish scouts. But these Magyar scouts have bloodlines, so they have a massive advantage over these Frankish scouts. And as long as the Spearmen don't join the party, this is a massive lead for Kamigawa. Did a nice job killing three villagers, but... In the meanwhile, Rubenstock is losing his TC. I feel like he should have just gone castle. He could have done it. I feel like he could have done it. Just repair the TC. Or just relocate your TC. That's also fine. Meanwhile, Yupa is out. Oh, yeah, Yupa is... Yupa has already been out. But yeah, relocate your TC. Click up to Castle Age. Get some knights out. We have a Pete Martel on the way to Feudal Age, by the way, in this one. So he's progressing uh, as well in this... Still no chops through for the Italian team, and overall the villager count looks um, probably better for uh, Suomi overall, because Pete is going up to feudal age, so he cannot produce villagers right now. There is a reason why this map is called Chaos Pit, you know. <clears throat> Anyways, we still have quite a lot of scouts in here, and it just blows my mind that Suomi is not actually doing anything to deal with this one. Ruben could do Shkami again... Technically, yes, but he shouldn't. Looking at Ruben Stock's eco, he has a good enough eco to just rebuild the TC on the outside and get up to Castle Age. If he gets up to Castle Age, he's gonna have knights, and knights will destroy everything that Kamigawa has, and neither Kamigawa nor Pete Martel are actually very close to clicking up to Castle, but they're getting there slowly. So, he doesn't have all day, and I feel like he could have had enough advantage to get up to Castle himself. Other thing for Rubenstock, if he wants to go feudal all in, he needs uh, plus one armor and melee attack bonus. Otherwise, this is not going to work against Magyar scouts with bloodlines. <clears throat> um, are there town centers for Rubenstock? Apparently not, and he's rebuilding it on the outside. That's smart. That's very, very smart. And oh, the gate is open! The gate is open! Uh, maybe not. Maybe not, but in this case, there is still villagers going down here for Kamigawa. I actually thought that they were going to get in and uh, kill everybody in here, which would be a disaster. But this also means that Yupe, by the way, can actually just wall this one off again. Okay, so are we having a town center for Rubenstock? Yes, we do, but in the meanwhile, he used up all his food and Kamigawa is going up to Castle Age. Kamigawa has no eco, but all he needs is free knights with Magyars. Magyars will have the plus two attack immediately, and having free knights out here would kill this entire thing. This is why I said that for Rubenstock, it would have been just way better to get up to Castle Age as fast as possible, get a few knights out, and finish the game. Get it? Finish the game. In the meanwhile, Pete is going to lose quite considerable amounts of villagers in this one, but Rubenstock is down to 38 himself. Um, the only concern right now for Pete and Kamigawa is that they are not actually getting through the walls. So, yeah, you're going to have a lot of knights in the middle, but what if you can't get out? If you can't get out, you're not gonna have any gold, and uh, Kamigawa is going to be in that situation. He's going to have to sell some. So, if uh, Yuba plays this right, he could just deny his opponent from uh, getting outside ever. At 30 minutes, does Ruben have a TC? Oh yeah, he does. Yeah, that basically that's the case. Here. There is still quite a lot of scouts here for... Uh, Kamigawa. 
Some of them are weak, but I mean, they still have bloodlines and uh, the plus one attack. That is a nice raid over here. And with the Spearman round, this is not a fight that Kamigawa can actually take. Even though he's up to Castle, so he's gonna get uh, the plus two attack from uh, Magyars in this one. But still, this might be the moment to go up for Ruben's stock. But well, right now he has 47 wood in the bank or food in the bank. That's just not gonna happen. And in the meanwhile, Yupe is just chasing away the Voyagers here from uh, Pete. Scouts coming in to take this fight, and this is looking bad for Pete, I would say. Scouts should engage this. Just go for the Wills. And apparently we're gonna have a tower coming up from Yupe. You know, just for a good measure, so Kamigawa's not gonna have any gold income or food income. Chop through, still not completed for Italy. They're trying to chop everywhere. And I would love to see Yupe just dropping uh, outposts everywhere to spot if they are chopping through there. So the problem for Kamigawa is that he doesn't have gold to make knights with. So he can get out one knight, two knights, but those will die to superior amounts of spearmen. And once they are dead, they just uh, can be replenished. As we have a decent quick call over here from Kamigawa. Again, his wood line is safe. And here comes the voice as well from Yupe. Yupe, on the other hand, also sees this chopping. So he could actually wall this one off as well. Yeah, this is beyond fun. This is something completely special. So in a nutshell, one team has gold, the other one does not. That's the overall summary. Yeah, Sumi is playing Prison Architect. Kamigawa's out. No, he isn't. He isn't out. He isn't out by far. Wait, how did Vulture... How did this guy get out? I think this Vulture just walked... What? How is that Vulture out? There is no exit. There is no exit, and this could be a game changer, because if a TC goes up here... Convert? Uh, there is no monasteries. I have no clue. I have zero idea how this Voyager got out, but the, if this TC goes up, Kamigawa and Pete are actually in a better spot. It went through the finish hole. You mean... There isn't any hole. It went out over here before this was walled. This one was walled off 10 minutes ago in the game. And uh, Yupe sees the town center, but he's not reacting. If this goes up, then uh, Pete and the Kamigawa are safe. Because then you actually have a TC that allows you to produce Vodgers. A siege workshop being rushed up immediately. Uh, I think it's late. But it's one Vodger building the TC. If you can pop out a mango before this would go up, you can ki kill the Vodger and stop the TC. But I think it's late. I think it's late. Voling came in is, uh, yeah, like, he could surround this with stone walls, probably. That's probably the safest way of doing it. 85%. I think the TC might go up. If there is... Uh, TC is not going up because Pete resigns. Because we also have Castlage for Rubenstock, probably that's why. So, the thing is, yeah, Kamigawa would be out with one villager and the TC. Nice. But he still hasn't managed to chop outside, so it's not like he would have huge amounts of villagers out. And in the meanwhile, you have knights coming in here for Rubenstock. Pete Martel is 39 villagers, but this is all gonna get cleared up. I'm somewhat puzzled by this GG, to be honest. Because I feel like it could have gone a bit longer. But I understand why Pete called it. <clears throat> So, this means that we have, uh, let's just look at this timeline, that feudal time, that's like 29 minutes feudal, just look at these up times, 9.54 and 9.47 for Kamigawa and Yupe, Rubenstock 21 minutes 37 seconds for feudal, 
He beat Martellus 28-34. Okay. So this just happened. And uh, this gives Sumi one more point to go into match point. And I gotta say that I might be a bit biased here, but I feel like the finals would be even more entertaining if uh, Suomi gets in. Because I feel like uh, the reason why Pete and Kamigawa are playing unique here is because their opponents are playing unique. But I feel like if uh, Pete and Kamigawa get into the finals, they would probably play a bit more conventional. But it's far from there, because it's match point for Rubenstock and UPEP. So, guess what? What is missing for Suomi? Who is in the final? No idea. Who is on the other side of the brackets? I have absolutely no idea. <clears throat> so, basically, Byzantines are still available for douching. Spanish are available for towers. Um, then you have Koreans available for towers, even though that's a bit more unlikely. Incas have been used up. Technically, Cumans are available to douche with a second town center. You build that second TC very slow, though, so I'm not sure if that would actually work out. But that could still be an idea. Let's see what Suomi goes for. We have Chaos Pit, game number four here. Boom. So we have uh, Celts and uh, Magyars. Interesting. Suomi stopping with the douche. I'm disappointed. I'm legit disappointed at this approach. Pete is going Lithuanian and Kamigawa is playing Slavs. What is this? Are we seeing meta gameplay here? I would be disappointed if this was meta gameplay. I mean, I could imagine Pete opening with the two militia drush. Don't you forget me talking about Kjell Douche. I guess one of the benefits that you have here with Kel Douche is that you can still chop through very fast. So, if you chop through very fast, you don't get a bonus to your douche itself. But you can chop through fast. Alright, so welcome everybody. Game number 4 in a best of 5 in between uh, Italy and Finland. Finland represented by Juppe. And uh, Ruben Stock in blue and red playing as Celts and uh, Magyars. And on the other side, we'll have Italy with Kamigawa in yellow as Slavs and purple for Pete Martel in Lithuanians. So the thing is that uh, technically you can go for a douche with uh, with uh, Celts here. But you don't get a bonus to your douche at all. What you get with Celts is that you can chop through the wood line very, very fast. So Yupe would be able to do something that he has done in the previous game as well. Just make sure that their opponents never get to the outside. Because Kelts will be the fastest sieve to chop through these wood lines. That's almost guaranteed. Unless some disaster strikes Yupe here. So he's going to be the fastest player out there. There's a chance we are going to see a um, very aggressive approach to just deny the chopping outside. Oh yeah, a bonus is that you can actually go faster. But I mean... I don't consider that a that major bonus, like in comparison to, let's say, Persians. Anyways, this is a very interesting decision from Yupe, and apparently the people on the chat who are familiar with the Suomi voice chat and the Yupe stream might be right about the douche. But here it is. If you drop your lumber camp here with Celts, it's an obvious, obvious move towards a douche here for Yupe. Because if he wanted to chop through, he would drop it over here. <clears throat> Meanwhile, for Ruben's talk, I do expect him to just play standard scouts. And I wonder what is the plan for Kamigawa and Pete. Especially Pete is who I'm curious in. He's four on wood. 
What is Pete planning here? And uh, meanwhile, for Kamigawa with Slavs, you're just likely to go for uh, Scouts, even though that's not the strongest Scout save, but Franks and uh, Magyars were already used by uh, the Italy here, so they have to go for one that doesn't have a direct Scout bonus, but one that has a good Eco bonus to play around with that. Oh, look at that from Yupe. He's going to douche, but instead of actually bringing his own uh, turkey to get that and uh, get some food income, he's going to send them all of, all the way around to Rubenstock. So basically he's slinging Rubenstock with a bunch of uh, turkeys. And I think this is all about, oh yeah, Yupe is going to play Massey and Rubenstock plays conventional scouts. And uh, basically Yupe is just buying time for his teammate and another douche should happen here very soon this is going to be a quite excellent one if it hits the berries as well and it will so this is a very very good tc spot and pete martel is like leave me alone dude i've had enough of this meanwhile on the other side <clears throat> kamigawa just casually pushing in the deer here for himself the thing is that with um, slabs you're not gonna have any faster feudal age than Magyars because neither of the Sifs have a direct Dark Age eco bonus to play around with. So the eco advantage for Slavs will only kick in feudal. Anyways, in the meanwhile, Yupa has taken quite significant beating to his scout. But well, he can just try to drag in Pete's scout within the range of his own TC and kill it. Again, Yupa is going to be housed for a second. Not ideal, but it is what it is. Anyways. Um, Yupe is going to have to repair this one because uh, he has lost a lot of HP on his TC and it's already in flames. So this is something that he's going to have to invest into quite massively. Remember his wood income is going to be way better than Pete's wood income because uh, Lithuanians don't get any um, lumberjacking bonus. So technically it's much easier to get uh, the wood for Yupe to repair than it is for uh, Pete Martel. Anyways, first to click up into Feudal Age is going to be a Ruben stock going for 20 pop scouts. Kamigawa is playing 21 pop. But the Feudal Age difference is pretty minor, so there was probably some idle time for uh, Ruben stock to pull that one off. Anyways, for now Pete is holding this one, but I would give the edge to Magyars at the beginning in the Scouts War just because they have way better scouts. Their Spearmen are also way better than the starting Spearmen of Slavs. So. That's a nice combo to play around with. And in the meanwhile, we have uh, chops to attempt from all players but Yupe. I still believe it would be better for Yupe to try and chop through here. Because with Vault of Voyagers you should be fine, and with Celts you chop through very fast, so... Even if your plan with the douche doesn't work, you will at least be on the outside, which could be a nice one. For now, Yupe is just trying to bait that scout of uh, Pete into the range of his own TC. In the meanwhile, Pete is just running for his life uh, as usual in this one. So here it is for Ruben. He's gonna drop the stable immediately, soon followed by the stable of Kamigawa. And as I said, I feel like there was quite a lot of idle time and... Uh, Look what we have here. A failed douche from Yupe. This didn't work out as planned. And he doesn't have the wood for another TC. Okay, this is getting interesting because this is the first successful defense from Pete against the douche. And uh, this fight should also be better for him. I believe. There is uh, 12 villagers pulled from Pete. Only 10 from Yupe, and Yupe is without a town center. Yupe is without wood to make a town center. And he's getting his villagers killed. Especially with scouts coming in here as well from Kamigawa. There's going to be scouts as well from Rubenstock though, and those scouts are slightly better. But still, that's a massive number advantage. Oh, look at this. Here comes the boxing. And it feels like the micro is just way better for Pete Martel. Yupe has a lot of idle time on those Voyagers in this boxing. But remember, 
Scouts are still in here for Rubenstock, and those are better scouts than uh, Kamigawa's ones. But the Micro is just way better from the Italians. Rubenstock with zero kills, zero deaths right now. But Yupe is getting absolutely disintegrated over here. What you want to achieve in this fight is exactly what Italy is doing. Just kill the Spearman with your Voyagers, and then use the Scout to kill the Voyagers. And at this point, as I said, the Micro is just way, way better for Italy up until to this point. But this could be interesting because there's four scouts exposing the Voyagers for Yupe. Apparently, he's calling this one off. He has a lot of weak Voyagers that could be lost in this fight, by the way. So, it's not ideal for him by any means. And, uh, being honest, this was just way better for Italy. Because at this point, Yupe is pretty much dead, and Pete isn't that bad, dead, to be honest. Like, Pete also has a lot of idle time, but Yupe is down to 10 Voyagers. I mean, it's 10 Voyagers, although, being honest, if uh, Pete doesn't actually retreat from this position, he could also be down to that low Voyager count very soon. Oh boy, oh boy. It's half past midnight here. And I'm watching people douching each other. Way to live a life. Anyways, it appears that uh, Pete is going to stabilize. Yupe will be able to afford a TC at least, dropping it by the berries. So he can actually get some food income for himself. But getting back into this game is going to be a long, long, long process. Anyways, for now, it's going to go down to Rubenstock versus Kamigawa with the Scouts War. And Kamigawa's gonna have a way better eco, but those Scouts are just uh, way better with that extra attack. It depends on how Kamigawa is going to position his Spearman. Because in the meanwhile, I don't see any defensive Spearman from Sugomi, as I was saying that I just found all of these Spears around. Meanwhile, we do have a bit of a raid coming in here. Yupa might not be able to access wood here. And, uh, well... Kamigawa, is this an opening? I don't think so, but I'm not 100% sure if this is an opening or not. Anyways, for now, Kamigawa is not able to do damage, but it is, I think, Rubenstock who has to do damage because his eco is going to be weaker. Whereas, uh, for Rubenstock, he's got Magyar eco, no eco bonus. I mean, the scouts are cheaper, which is a massive boost, and he also has the free forging. But still, Slavic farming is not something to underestimate. And uh, if Kamigawa has a free farm boom here, he's just gonna get to knights much faster. So I would say that uh, these scouts have to do damage very, very soon. Uh, it appears that uh, Pete is out. We will have uh, chops through as well from Kamigawa very soon. And uh, chops through as well from Rubenstock. I wonder if Ruben is gonna pull his scouts back. He has a lot of scouts, so this could actually do a lot of damage here. And what he needs to achieve right now is just kill a lot of Voyagers from Pete to compensate for Rubenstock's losses. But I mean, there is an 18 Voyagers difference between Yupe and uh, Pete, even though both players are still in Dark Age. But I think Pete is just turning it, this into essentially an FC. He's gonna start mining gold. And uh, we'll just play a fast castle here. Well, more like a slow castle. But anyways, market is coming up here for Kamigawa. And as I said, the Slavic farming in the end is going to kick in. And we have scouts galloping around. Oh, this is smart from Kamigawa. I actually expected Rubenstock to pull this move here. Loop all the way around and hit the wood line from the other side. But that's not something he's thinking about. He's gonna have a sneaky will, which is actually lucky because he's going to spot the scouts coming his way. Meanwhile, scouts did break in here through the gate, but the house wall behind is nice. On the other hand, there is no defense against these scouts and they actually kill quite a lot here. From Pete, he's down to 32 Voyagers, but this one is not something that Rubenstock can defend against right now. His gold miners could be exposed. If he has good quick walls, he can defend it, but this could be very dangerous, and he's galloping back with his own uh, Scouterinos. Food counts pretty much even for both players. One player has cheaper scouts, the other one has better farming eco, so in the end it kind of evens out for a scouts build, and apparently Rubenstock knows what's coming his way. These spears also have the plus one attack. So, it's okay, and without Bloodlines, Kamigawa might not be able to take this fight. Yeah, free Spears should be enough. Honestly, if you don't separate the Spears, you are fine. Meanwhile, Scouterino's over here, still unable to break in, but they could actually snag a Voyager here from uh, Kamigawa. And we have Castle Age coming in here for Kamigawa. 
Uh, Rubenstock is missing the gold to go up, which is actually pretty painful. He probably wants to sell 100 food right now to click up because he kind of has to. And oh, the Vulture opens the gate! The Vulture opens the gate! It didn't happen in game number two, but it does happen here. And suddenly this is an even game because that's a lot of dead Voyagers. Whichever way I put it, that's going to be like minus 10 Voyagers from Kamigawa. The Voyager just opened the gate. I feel like Rubenstock might have been waiting for that opportunity over there. Just to have a Voyager coming that way. If you have Bloodlines, you could even take this fight against the two Spearmen and get some more Voyager kills. But no Bloodlines on the side of uh, Rubenstock as of yet. And in the meanwhile... Yupe is still 25 Voyagers Dark Age. Pete is up to Feudal himself. And Pete's actually getting close to clicking up to Castle Age. So, Pete is not someone to sleep on. And uh, with Lithuanians, especially with this many relics on the outside, look at that. Four relics very close. I could imagine Pete just, you know, sitting back, chilling, and uh, trying to get up to Castle Age. Get him quick monastery out. Pick up all these four relics, and suddenly you have beastly knights. Nice quick was over there from uh, Pete. But these voyagers could also be exposed a tiny bit, and apparently uh, Kami is still unable to get some voyager picks, but now these guys have bloodlines, but still some of them are so weak. So, knights are coming in, but same thing. Slavic knights against Magyar knights. Magyar knights are just going to be better at the beginning, even though I still believe that there is no bloodlines. Okay, there is bloodlines now for Ruben stock, so he's fine. Anyways, these scouts are kind of trapped in here, so you're not going to get any good use for them for a quite a significant time, unfortunately, for them. And in the meanwhile, scouts came in. Uh, I think there was one Voyager killed here. The rest of it is just Spearman, so that was an okay fight for Rubenstock. And up to Castle Age he is. He's going to have plus one armor, not something that Kamigawa has. Normally you would go for forging here, but since Magyars already have that, you can go for scaleboarding and just start pumping out knights like a madman. And those knights will be plus two, plus one, whereas Kamigawa doesn't have a single upgrade. Meanwhile, um, the best thing you can do with these scouts is try to bash the um, walls through here. That will be probably the biggest achievement. Anyways, um, we do have Feudal Age kicking in here for Yupe. He's at 25 villagers right now. And he's steadily chopping through. In fact, looking at his resources, he might actually click up to Castle Age pretty soon. Pete on the way to Castle Age himself. But in the meanwhile, his teammate is getting clapped. Because Kamigawa is 32 villagers in comparison to Ruben being 39. And even though Slavic Farm is compensated a tiny bit for that, the knights that he's facing are just way better. Look at that, plus 2 attack, plus 1 armor in comparison to... Zero upgrades, basically, other than bloodlines. So the quality of these knights from Rubenstock are just way better right now. And as I said, I feel like Yupe is actually going to get up to Castle Age pretty soon here as well. But I think Ruben has to be a bit more aggressive with his knights. He should know he has the advantage and he can actually take this fight and trade the knights. Second TC coming up here for Rubenstock. Some vultures might actually die here though, because there is no Spearman. There's absolutely no Spearman. There was a hole here from Rubenstock where the scouts got through. And uh, now they're going to pick off one Voyager. Scouts will die to the TC though. In this one pretty soon. And the scouts are back on track. They can actually go in and try to harass uh, Pete in this one. So looking at Yupe. He needs to sell a bit more. Or just wait until he drops off the gold. And he can also go up to Castle Age. We are going to have Pikemen apparently from Pete. With this scale ma mail armor. Upgrade, but I don't necessarily like it. Like, Lithuanian pikes are alright, but I still would prefer Kalt pikes quite massively. And not even mentioning the fact that these knights could bash their way in very soon. Coming up with a fight here, Spears will get killed by knights pretty easily, but I feel like Rubenstock is just playing a bit too passive. Yeah, it's a 900 score FC, by the way. Here it goes, Yupe is going up at 30 Voyagers, at 30 pop, at 27 minutes into castle. Yeah, it's not really an FC, it's more like an SC, like Slow Castle, or uh, I think DSC might be even better, like Damn Slow Castle, or ESC, like Extremely Slow Castle. That's probably a better name for this build order. 
Alright, that's a few pikemen, nothing special, Magyar Knights will clap them, but you don't really want to take uh, a lot of engagements like that. And in the meanwhile, we do have some Scouterinos from coming out, finding some Voyager picks on Yupe's woodline. Yupe is down to 27 Voyagers, and you know, Yupe might actually be having a tough time here with all these knights inside his eco. But same kind of applies to Pete Martel. He does have a few pikemen, but as I said, these knights are almost fully upgraded. And uh, a lot of Voyagers could go down pretty rapidly. Still, you don't want to take this fight. There's too many pikemen. I feel like for Ruben's talk, he should just go towards the base of uh, Kamigawa, but it's not easy because Kami's base in the inside is just so small. Oh, this is so massy. Anyways, Yupe is up to castle. He could drop a TC over here, and so he will. But he's down to 22 Voyagers in comparison to Pete having 39. So Pete is going to be a way bigger factor in this game. However, yeah, Pete actually has a foothold on the outside, so... At this point, both Italian players have a foothold on the outside. Their combined Voyager count is uh, 89 in comparison to 81 from Suomi. But you gotta remember that uh, Rubenstock is actually playing Magyars here. That have uh, pretty good knights already with plus 2 plus 1 in comparison to these knights still being unupgraded. So Rubenstock could take these fights pretty easily. And Rubenstock is a pretty convincing eco lead in comparison to Kamigawa. In reality, that won't actually really translate to do much because Slavic farming compensates for it, but it's still a nice thing. And we could have free conversions. Oh boy, Kamigawa, that is uh, going to be a trap. Look at that trap from Rubenstock. He just killed everything here. And this will be a moment when he can actually dive in beneath the town center and kill that. Kamigawa has five military. If Ruben heals these knights up, he could just dive in and take that TC down. Or dive in here and kill Pete Martel's TC that's already very weak. Uh, in the meanwhile, we will have a stonewall on the right side from Yupe to limit the movement of... Uh, <coughs> ...of Pete here, and uh, we have uh, three TCs booming for Ruben's stock, in comparison to free TCs as well from Kamigawa. Kamigawa still has a 6 Voyager's deficit though. Anyways, these knights just cannot engage the pikes. Just go for the hit and run approach and... Uh, uh, do you want to take that fight, Ruben's stock? You might want to. It's still plus 2, plus 1 and uh, numbers advantage against pikes. Not a great fight, but it might be enough. And since the base of uh, Pete is just so open, he might just get overrun by knights here, and as I said, this TC is pretty weak, so... Um, like... That wasn't an ideal fight for Rubenstock, but it's the type of, uh... Fight that you can actually take. It's a risky one, and it's not really cost-efficient, but what you can gain from it is just very, very massive, and suddenly Pete is dropping in Voyager count quite rapidly. He's down to 44, and if you compare it to Yupe's Voyager count, it's actually... dead even now. In fact... Um, you could actually make an argument for trying to knock this TC down, even though a lot of the knights are weak, so you probably want to avoid taking that fight. But at this point, the Voyager count between Pete and Yupe are absolutely even, even though this is not a good fight by any means. For Ruben Stock, he's fighting against Pikeman, close to TC, and that's a lot of weak knights. This is not a fight he should be taking. This is by far not a fight that he should be taking, but he's still taking it, trying to finish off the TC, but decides to bail out of this one. Anyways, at this point Kamigawa has 23 on Wood, Rubenstock is a way better food income by the way, and he has 3 stables worth of knights being queued up, and in the meanwhile we are apparently seeing pikemen from Kamigawa. But Drujinia is just an Imperial Age upgrade, so those pikemen aren't going to be super special, and this gives time for Yupe to slowly climb back into the game. Knights coming in here, and we will have, uh, I think, one conversion, but still, one Voyager goes down, uh, finish off the Monk, will ya? And you have a 9 Voyager's deed, now 10 Voyager's deed for Rubenstock, and more importantly, the Knight production is just insane, it's triple stable Knights already from him, and uh, killing quite a lot of Voyagers here from Kamigawa, Kamigawa is down to 78, and Italy might actually be eliminated, and this would also mean that in the finals, we could actually see this legendary duo, Rubenstock and Yupe, 
battling it out again against a different opponent, but I guess the style would be pretty similar. Because at this point, it's going to be a very, very tough fight for Pete and uh, Kamigawa to fight this one. Yupe is at in villagers in comparison to Pete. Ruben's stock has a pretty decent advantage as well in villagers in comparison to Kamigawa. And uh, as I said, in the meanwhile, Yupe is just booming behind this one. So this is the biggest advantage that Suomi is having. The massive pressure of Ruben's stock in the face of Kamigawa means that Yupe can just boom. And even though the score difference is quite massive in the favor of Pete Martel in comparison to Yupe, 2000 points against 3000, in reality, Pete is actually 10 villagers behind. Meanwhile, another TC comes up here for Pete, that's going to be TC number 3. And he's launching an offensive, Pike and Mangonal coming in here for Pete to try and pressure the food eco of Yupe, so Yupe might not catch a break here. But that's a lot of Knight Arenos for Ruben Stock, to be honest. Even though this is not a great fight, but if you convert 5 pikemen in this fight, you can still take this. And uh, the same applies to this fight over here. Ruben Stock could just send his entire army and uh, convert the pikes, at least some of them, and uh, finish off the Mangano. Siege Workshops comes in here for uh, Yupe. I'm not sure if Redemption is there for Pete Martel to convert the Manganos, but I don't think it is. And we're gonna have a fourth stable as well from Ruben. Uh, Ruben has 46 on food, Suri 8 for Kamigawa, and he's stockpiling quite a lot of food for himself, just coming in with pikemen. Manganol, the first Manganol is about to pop out, and let's see this fight. I think there is enough knights to take this one. Not going to be a very cost-efficient fight, but it's going to smash this entire army. And as I said, the Mango from Yupe could pop out any moment and kill the pikemen. He kind of has to kill the pikemen, though, to help his teammate in this one. But still, this is a victory in this fight as well from uh, Suomi. Not the most cost-efficient fight ever, but four pikemen from... Uh, Italy isn't really going to work well in the long run, because at some point, Yupe is going to arrive with a few Vote Raiders, or Champions, whichever he wants, or Scorpions, that also works, of course. Anyways, if only there wasn't a Castle draw from Kamigawa, oh boy, Rubenstock could imp, and uh, if he imps with this TC, gets a bit more stone for himself, he can counter Castle this and trap this one down from the safety of his wars, but I like this uh, Pike Pen plus Castle push here. It's kind of going to be an all-in Castle Age push, but it's not like uh, Rubenstock would have the army to stop this one. He's going in for a raid instead, and he could get through this gate very fast and uh, enter the heart of Kamigawa's eco. Not sure if he's going to do that, but I think that should be the play for him. Castle is up, but Imp is coming in here for Rubenstock on this DC, that's a good decision. And apparently they want to bash their way through these Vos. Vos are coming in here for Kamigawa. And I don't think that uh, Ruben Stock is going to be out. Meanwhile, Pete Martel still is behind by 10 Voyagers in comparison to Yupe. And Pete still has only 14 Voyagers on food, which is definitely not ideal. But anyways, there should be probably a Manganol coming in here very soon for Kamigawa. To try and knock that TC down. He's getting close to clicking up to Imperial himself, but... There is going to be a massive advantage for Rubenstock, and remember that uh, Rubenstock getting to Imp will mean that he's gonna get the plus 4 attack immediately with Magyars, which is again a nice power spike to exploit. But there isn't really huge numbers for Rubenstock, it's 18 military only, and Kamigawa has a decent force of pikemen. Here, if he can knock this TC down, things could get heated up here for... Uh, for Suomi. Because they have a nice control on the outside, but losing this much farming space is going to hurt for Ruben's stock. Because his farming eco is going to be crippled for a moment. Yupe with a siege workshop over here, he wants to get some scorpions out and deal with the pikemen. Meanwhile, some Moncarino is coming in here from Ruben's stock. Not sure what the plan was, but this feels like a Monk and Siege push. Just two players having a separate one. Yeah, 2000 food is uh, going to be enough for Paladins here, pretty conveniently. Like, you can get plus 4 armor nicely, that's a nice ground attack. And then you just need Cavalier and Paladin. You don't even need to invest into Blast Furnace. 
Anyways, the TC goes down here, and Kamigawa is also going up to Imp, and we are seeing Boyars. If only this couldn't get uh, more interesting. And the thing is that, yes, Rubenstock is gonna have decent amount of Cavalier. However, Kamigawa is not going to be that much behind to get the Drusinha Harmadiers. And there's also a lot of conversions coming up here for Pete Martel. Castle drop from Yupa, but again, this is a bit ambitious with all these knights lurking around. We have 97 voyagers from Yupa, but 12 of them idle. Kamigawa has a slightly more efficient eco. Counter castle coming up in here, and this might end up being a doubt castle for Yupa. <laughs> what am I looking at here? Why am I doing this with my life? Anyone knows? Because right now, this is going to be a Doubt Castle from Yupe. And uh, looking at Yupe, though, he could actually imp himself. Yeah, this castle is going to be dead, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, well, there is forging coming up for Kamigawa. Should be Drusinia Hubs very, very soon. He has enough resources to get those techs. Meanwhile, for uh, Ruben Stock, he does have the Cavalier upgrade. Somehow the Spikeman is out poking people. More poking here. And we do have some Cavaliers running around in this one. Not really doing anything influential. So, is Rubenstock gonna imp at all? I guess he needs the buildings. He has a siege workshop, but I don't see university or monastery. Padin indeed queued up here for uh, Rubenstock. But this is a tough push to stop. What a messy game. I mean... It's Chaos Pit. What did you expect? And I feel like the most messy setup that we have had was uh, the first attempt at game number one that had to be replayed, unfortunately. Meanwhile, Yupe is actually trying to get a Doubt Castle up. This is a true Doubt Castle. Uh, 96? Not with this wave, and Yupe is dropping in villager count quite massively. Yupe is dropping down to 80 and he has 20 idols. Meanwhile, look at this push. Look at this push. And uh, Rubenstock has 25 military only, which is nice, but they aren't really killing anything. And in the meanwhile, these Harbadiers are killing Yupe here quite massively. Um, the castle is still not up. Yeah, uh, by the way, Yupe was using Pikeman to draw away the castle fire. Left side, we have a Cavalier push. But we also have Boyars for Kamigawa. Not a lot of upgrades, though, so these Boyars aren't going to be super fancy. I mean, they have 6 melee armor in total, which is something that is almost equivalent to Cavaliers. So I don't think these Boyars will be great, especially against the Paladins now. But Grusinia Habadiers here would be more than enough. We'll have an Onager Cut coming up here from uh, Rubenstock, indeed. Onager Cut on the way. A uh, Contingency Wall could be made in this position, for example, from Kamigawa. Castle could actually finish off that Onager, if I'm not mistaken. But the Paladins are in. Meanwhile, Habadiers will be divert diverted to counter this assault. And that gives some time for Yupe to click up into Imperial himself. I think the biggest uh, weak link right now for Italy is uh, Pete, who is still not going to Imp and he doesn't have any military. Uh, this, this game is an absolute mess. Some raiding being done here at Kamigawa's Eco. Kamigawa is 200 pop. Yupe is down to 89. Pete is alright, but he actually is unable to access that gold. He could mine it, and he has zero villagers on gold. So he can't even imp. If he could imp, this would be pretty much an even game, I would say. Right now, I might slightly favor Suomi, just because it's going to turn into a 2v1 very soon. So you have Habadiers and Boyars out here, but as soon as Yupe starts making military in imp, that's going to be a tough one, and the cast is already up for Void Raiders. So, like, Void Raiders and Rams pushing here would be pretty tough to stop. <laughs> what Lithuanians had uh, in Imps beside Laetis and Baden? I think uh, they kind of have to go Laetis or Pala here. Or, uh, <clears throat> yeah, they kind of have to. Because Kamigav is going Hub and Siege. Rubenstock indeed 
up to 170 villagers. Last time I checked, that's not the real count you want to have when 10 military is only available. And we have a, a sneaky villager coming through alongside the elite boyars and harbadiers. I don't think the Virginia is there just yet for Kamigawa. But, oh, that's a villager poked down by a pikeman. There's so many things happening at this point. Right side a castle from Yupe, and he can actually trap down these buildings. Imp coming in here very soon for Pete Martel. And we are gonna have a pattern race here because apparently the castle from Yupe has been finished. Get it? Finished. And uh, Pete Martel intends to rush it down with petards. Meanwhile, we have uh, Boyars pushing to the left. Uh, quite a lot of Hobbitiers running around. They just ignore the castle fire and just run straight in here to try and hit the back of uh, Ruben Stock's eco. Here comes the ram push. Ram is going to probably draw away some fire. And then the petards will try to try to rush down the castle. Ruben Stock, thanks to the fact that he's getting raided like crazy, he's gonna drop down to 160 villagers. And uh, that castle is almost dead, thanks to the petard arenos. They all are garrisoned. One more petard and you can finish this one off. Uh, oh. This is looking more and more like a uh, game number 5 situation here. Here comes one latest to kill the Mangonal. That's perfectly fine. Are they allowed to sling? I think yes. But I don't have a confirmed info on that. Meanwhile, both castles seem pretty much dead in this one. Because latest don't have any upgrades, so they die pretty easily to the Pikeman. And indeed, this is going to be a trade of castles in the end for both players. But look at this flood of Habadiers and Boyars. In this one, Ruben is not 146 soldiers. And meanwhile, on the right side, we do have a TC up with quite a lot of barracks coming up here for Pete behind enemy lines. This is just one chaotic mess. Meanwhile, somehow these boyars got in here. Apparently, ju they just used this entrance in. And they are going to stop a castle from Yupa. And Yupa is dropping down below 100 voyagers in this. The only player who's going to be below 100 at this point. And Mimba's left hand side corner is going to be apparently possessed by Kamigawa in this one. He's knocking down um, this castle. Can I ask how Kamigawa got a trap in here without the castle in this corner? Did he just walk all the way around with this trap to p position it over here? There are some weird things happening in this game. I don't know how this trap got in here. Anyways, at this point, Yupe is down to 87 Voyagers, Ruben is also down quite massively, and uh, we could get some Game 5 hype, because apparently, we are going that way. Oh, this is, this is just genius. Overall, this entire series has been ridiculous. And we could see Game number 5, which is going to decide who is going into the finals. You can see Suomi coming back. I don't think so. Like, at this point, Yupe's eco is uh, pretty much in ruins. And they're not gonna have any trade. Whereas, uh, for uh, Italy, they can actually start trading. Yupe is down pretty low in population. Suomi doesn't have a better map control for trade. This corner, this corner, and this corner all in the possession of Italy. Like, Suomi could potentially secure this one, but they're far from it right now. Like, there's a bunch of barracks here for Pete. I wouldn't actually say that uh, Suomi controls this one by any means. In fact, there is Pikeman running into the trade here right now. Meanwhile, we have a uh, Habadir force on the left side. This foothold has more or less been lost. Apparently, we do have some Light Cav coming up here from Rubenstock. Mainly because he's running short on gold. Habadir is bashing their way through houses and walls here. And, uh... We are gonna have just mass Habadiers from Italy. Habadiers from Pete, Habadiers as well from uh, Kamigawa. Meanwhile, Elite Skirm's on the way for uh, Rubenstock. Missing the armor upgrades, but that's not really that important at this point. And indeed, gold control is something that could be a massive issue for uh, 
Suomi. Now, Suomi does have a decent amount of Kev Archers here, not something that Kamigawa would have a direct answer to, but once Siege Rams come in, I think this is still fine for Italy. Some Light Cavs will actually get cleaned up, and as I said, there is no trade at this point for Suomi. It's not like uh, Italy would have any trade, but they at least have the option to do that. And indeed, Stuff starts to run into the eco here from Rubenstock. Rubenstock dropping down to 120 Voyagers. Yupe is down to 54 himself. Military numbers are just a lot more convincing for uh, Suomi. Wait, no, for Italy. And, uh, well, this game might just be over and we could go into game number five. Boyards will actually be a legit move against the Cavalry or the Cav Archers. Seven Pierce Armor is pretty nice to play around with. I mean, they're not going to kill them directly, but it's going to be a decent enough meat shield that opens up the way for uh, the Siege Rams, the Halberdiers, and some more. And meanwhile, the right hand side is slowly collapsing. There's some Void Raiders in the party for Yupe that will clean up the Halberdiers for the time being, but it's not like Yupe can mass Void Raiders because he just doesn't have the Voyager numbers to do that. And in the meanwhile, there's more and more Halberdiers coming. Trebs are taking out TCs. And Rubenstock is kind of forced to run for his life right now in this one. And as I said, since he only has Cav Archers, Siege Rams could just finish off these buildings extremely fast. These Siege Rams are just idle for whatever reason, but it doesn't really matter. The eco is just not there anymore for Suomi. 62 and 95 Voyagers for the two players in comparison to 91 and 136. And there is a lot more raiding potential as well for Kamigawa and uh, Kamigawa and Pete. Now, the thing is that this hole is still there, so there is actually some raiding chances for Rubenstock, but this wall off is going to happen. Mm, yep, it's happening in the final moment. So in the end, these light cap don't get in here and uh, just looking at Rubenstock's eco is absolutely collapsing. They combine 450 Voyagers, I think. Suomi is dead in this one and we are going into game number five which would be a deciding game they're just not gonna have the eco to replenish their military that's the problem here so meanwhile they're losing rapidly like losing map control rapidly no corners to trade and indeed the ggs here italy grabbing game number four and uh, we will have a glorious game number five coming in here. So, Kamigawa was very efficient. 64 buildings raised. Zero lost. Kami had some massive carry. Rubenstock, 57 buildings lost in this one. And this is the really standout performance. The extra food. The gold is actually better for Rubenstock. So Rubenstock had a good boom in the end. It was just about the fact that he couldn't do enough damage on Kamigawa because Kamigawa was on the outside. And by the end, the Slavic farming started to kick in. Ah uh, yeah, that time also shows a very very massy game. How Sivs picked? I think both sides used Italy or wait no. Incas, Magyars, Franks, uh, Persians have all been used on both sides. I think Suomi still has... Uh, Byzantines available. And Celts are still available for Italy, if I'm not mistaken. So... Going into game number 5, <clears throat> in this, yes, yeah, Spanish is still available, which could be fun for douching. Uh, I would say that Byzantines might be slightly better though. Like with Spanish, you build that TC faster, but I don't think it's a that big benefit in comparison to having a Byzantine TC that's actually stronger. Even though it's not as strong as a Persian one naturally, but it's still pretty good uh, as a bonus if you want a douche. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Yupe attempting to play with uh, Byzantines here. Meanwhile for Rubenstock, I have a feeling that uh, he's just gonna go for a standard scout sieve. With uh, Magyars and Franks used up, it's likely going to be something like Huns or Slavs for himself. 
There is no Byzantine bonus in Dark Age, though. Uh, I think there is a tiny bit of bonus. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm gonna open Tech Tree for this. Yeah, there is. Look at this. Buildings, 10% extra HP in Dark Age, 20 in Feudal, 30 in Castle, 40 in Imp. It's an incremental bonus, but you get a bit of a bonus HP in Dark Age. In reality, that's uh, 240 extra HP. So that adds up for a total of 2640. But yeah, there is a small bonus. Which can also be a factor at douching. Alright, so how are we doing? We are getting ready right now, so in a few moments we will be getting in there. I don't know what to expect, honestly. We have seen a lot from Suomi. And I feel like the crazy part might still not be over. So we are going into game number 5 over here. Yeah, game number 5, let's go. I'm saying the same thing, but apparently Yupe is not listening to us. So, yeah, Byzantines is still available. If they want to play conventionally, then Aztecs could be a fun decision. But, you know, if they played the previous games, um, like the way they did, they should just play the final game as it is. So get some entertainment for us. Did Doctor fix your ear? Uh, partially. I got some eardrops um, to play around with. And I'll have to go back in a couple of days. So, it helped, but it's not 100% yet, by far. Alright, we have a game. So, Japanese from Yupe and Slavs from Rubenstock. Why do I have a feeling that we are going to see a Japanese TC drop. Like, the thing is that with the cheaper mill and lumber camp, especially in a messy game where you have to relocate, Japanese is a decent wood bonus. Like, it's comparable to Celts in the aspect that you can actually go for the douche a bit earlier because your lumber camp is cheaper and your mill is cheaper, so you save quite a lot of wood with that. And Slavs will probably just go for uh, the Scouts build. Alright, so welcome everybody. This is going to be game number 5 in a best of 5 in between. Yupe and Rubenstock representing Finland in the semi-finals of Chaos Pit 2v2 in AOE Olympics. On the right side we'll have uh, Slavs for Rubenstock in red and uh, Japanese for Yupe in blue. And on the other side we'll have Italy, represented by Pete Martel and Saracens in purple and yellow for Kamigawa in Teutons. So, according to my expectations and uh, judging by what we have seen in the previous games, it's very likely that we are going to see Yupe trying a DC drop again. And just capitalizing on the fact that he has to spend less on his lumber camps and mills. Which is also something that's pretty useful if you're just, you know, dropping TCs everywhere and chasing your opponent. You kind of have to relocate your base quite fast, so you might need to drop a lot of Mia's Lumber Camps in separate spots. Other side, for uh, Rubenstock, probably standard Scout's build. He's actually going to get decent damage done on the opponent's Scout in this one. But same damage is done to UPS Scout by the town center of Kamigawa. Kamigawa with Teutons, however. Tower Rushes are an option. DC drops are an option for him as well, but he's dropping the Lumber Camp here, so... Assuming that he wants to chop through, which is probably the case, I don't think that this is going to be a DC drop from Kamigawa, especially considering that he might be a stronger player of the two, so they probably don't want to waste him on a DC drop. So, Towers is a likely scenario, or he's going to play... Uh, Scouts. And the other thing... Pete Martel with Saracens. 
normally you cannot really go for uh, an archer build on this map. However, if there is one save that could have a legitimate chance of making a legit archer build, it's probably Saracens. With Saracens you can mine stone and have a pretty decent market price for a stone, sell it until you don't chop through and you will have an archer uh, combo here. And I would say that uh, Teutons with Scouts and uh, Saracen selling stone for archers is uh, probably a very very strong combo, probably the most close to what you would have as uh, compared to a standard Arabia build with archers and scouts. Anyways, you pay 5 on wood, this is going to be a TC drop again. And uh, I feel like uh, it's tough to say who to TC drop in this scenario. But I would say probably try uh, TC dropping Pete. Because Pete Martel is going to have a later few late time, so there's a chance you might even be able to stop it or force him to repair for quite a long time. Yupe is going to queue up Loom here, one more Voyager, because uh, he needs a bit more time to grab some wood for himself. And uh, he's actually making extra house, so he's not going to get housed after deleting the town center. But yeah, after dropping off the food from this hunt, he's gonna go for the douche. And meanwhile, for Ruben Stock, he's just gonna play this one with scouts. So the plan for Suomi would be to trade scouts between uh, Kamigawa and Ruben Stock. And meanwhile, Yupe knocks out uh, Pete from the equation. At least that's my plan. Other option that's also interesting. If you could douche Kamigawa and kind of prevent him from going scouts, then... Uh, we could potentially see skirms from Ruben stock if they suspect that the Saracen player is going to go archers. And we could see a very skirm heavy play here to push back the archers. Because even though selling stone is a nice uh, maneuver, it gets worse and worse. And every archer that's lost is going to be an extremely huge pain for Pete. But I don't think we're going to see archers anytime soon in this one. Because here comes a douche at a perfect spot, I would say. Um, so... Basically, it's going to take away the berries as well. Remember, previous game, Pete was able to defend against the douche. One of the things that you can do is just squeeze a bunch of voyagers into the TC. Um, and make sure that you land as many shots as you can before it's finished. Because, as you see, at this point, the TC is at 80% finished and like 50% HP. So, there's going to be a need for a lot of repairs here from Yupe already. The TC is already in flames. But you, yeah, I do agree that uh, selling stone isn't really an option if you are getting douche because you will need the stone to repair um, the TC. You don't consume stone repairing it, but uh, you will still need at least one stone in the bank to repair your town center. But yeah, Yupa is going to have to repair this one because uh, he's losing his TC slowly and he's not adding any voyagers to repair, which is uh, something that could actually be a... Uh, Significant disaster for him, I would say. Meanwhile, identical few late times coming for uh, both Ruben Stock and Kamigawa, but this is a actually no, they're not I mean, identical. I was just misled by a line over here, but in reality, faster feudal from Ruben Stock is actually going for uh, the 20 pop scouts build. Whereas Kamigawa is playing 21 pop in this one, which is going to mean that Ruben Stock is going to have an edge getting some uh, Scout Arenos out. Pete still not going up the Feudal Age, and that means that he cannot play the Market Exploit strategy. I would say that this is a fair trade for uh, Suomi. Being able to deny the Saracen Market Exploit is actually a pretty nice uh, advantage, I would say. Meanwhile, for Kamigawa, he's uh, more or less fully void, which is uh, pretty nice, something that can more or less negate... negate Ruben stocks assault. So, Loom is coming in here for Pete, but he's still very, very far away from being able to click up. Like, look at the resources in the bank. And that essentially means that Pete is not gonna be up to feudal anytime soon. And I can tell you, if this TC goes down from Pete, then Yupe is going to drop a TC in the face of uh, Kamigawa here. Here comes the stable with two Voyagers, scouts are already popping out for Ruben stock though. I would love to see Yupe walling his Voyagers in by the way, just for the sake of safety. But anyways, I'm uh, not sure how long Pete can sustain this level of repairs because he's running short on wood. Kind of the same thing is happening though for Yupe, but he has slightly better HP. 
This is going to be a tight one, I would say, because Yupe has smaller wood income, only 8 villagers on wood income compared to 10 on wood, so Pete Martel has more wood to work with, and that could allow him to repair that TC longer and win this TC fight for the time being, I would say. Relocating these villagers on wood would be pretty essential, I would say. Meanwhile, where are the scouts set from Rubenstock? He has a free military combined, and Oh, he was trying to get into Pete's wood line, but that is just not going to happen. Pete, on the other hand, is going to have to evacuate. And, uh... Not sure what happened here, but apparently all the villagers just ungarrisoned and started going to the rally point, and that's a disaster. Because right now the TC is not firing, so even though Yupe's wood income isn't as good, he is just, uh, not forced to repair. And in the meanwhile... Pete is actually losing villagers to this one. Pete has zero wood because he had to quick wall, and even worse, scouts are inside his wood eco because I think this wall might not have been finished or there was a hole. I'm not sure what happened here. Maybe the gate just got opened by a villager, but that is going to be a TC going down, and uh, I wouldn't actually say fight this for you, Pe. I would say that the right play for Yupe here would be to drop a TC in the face of Kamigawa. And just see what he can do. Because Pete... Like, Pete doesn't have the wood to rebuild this, but instead, this is what we get. Top quality competitive age vampires. Like, if I wanted to just confuse someone on how competitive age vampires looks like, I would just show them this recording. Imagine this. 1 million dollar Age Vampires tournament. Everybody hype. You're expecting millions of viewers. And then you have a trailer video. The perfect trailer you have seen in a tournament. And you have this scene on it. Imagine how many new viewers Age Vampires would get from such a scene. By the way, Pete is losing this fight, I think. Uh, Yupe still has 20 watches in comparison to 20. Oh, man. Yeah, this is an amazing gaming experience. As I said... Just to clarify this... There is not much harder thing... Um, Honestly, it's very micro-intensive, true, but I mean... Usually you watch Age of Empires for fancy quick wars, uh, great strategies, you know, great macro... Like a combination of good macro and micro. And not necessarily just ultimate boxing. Because it is what it is. No, no, no. Titanic Flute is just not... Not the way to do this. I can't find words. I've been casting this, by the way, for three and a half hours. Three and a half hours of 2v2 chaos pit with Ruben, Stock, and Yupe. But honestly, I'm seriously considering something like sponsoring a show match. Ruben, Stock, and Yupe versus uh, Lix and Stray Dog. Chaos pit best of five. How would you feel about that? If you think it cannot be cheesier, I'm gonna show you how. Like, that's probably the most cheesy and crazy matchup. Were there 5 TC drops? There were more. There were more. I think we had, like... I can't. I didn't even count. We had one game with, like, 4 or 5. We stopped counting at some point. Uh, Pete is down to 27 Voyagers, and... Um, by the way, I might have not mentioned, but he doesn't have a town center. At least Yupe does have a TC, even though it's idle. <clears throat> uh, these guys might be trapped in here, so... Oh, Pete is going to die. Meanwhile, though, scouts are running in for Kamigawa. It is Kamigawa's responsibility again to carry this. But in reality, Kamigawa and Ruben stocks are dead even in terms of uh, eco in this one. So... The fact that Pete is 15 villagers behind compared to Yupe is already a pretty massive issue. And as I said, Yupe 
after cleaning this one up, he's just gonna go and uh, drop a TC in the face of Kamigawa. I know it's going to happen. Look at the resources for Yupe. He's not even gathering any resources right now. Best mill spot ever. This is my new favorite mill spot here. Look at this nice little base. Everything that you need. A lumber camp, a mill, a house. Just so cute. Okay, so what else do we have? Here comes Yupe. Did I mention that he's gonna drop a TC in the face of Kamigawa? Because he will. He will actually drop a TC in the face of Kamigawa with like 20 villagers. And Kamigawa is gonna be like, okay, I'm out of this. Kamigawa could pick up to Castle Age, by the way, but I am not sure if he's actually gonna reach it. Um, TC should be within range, if I'm not mistaken. And this TC goes up very, very fast. Indeed, meanwhile, Pete Martel has four villagers left. He's out, by the way, and he actually gets a new TC up, so... He's not gonna get eliminated. Don't worry, guys. Okay, here comes the TC fight. And, uh, you know, Teutons will be better at defending in a TC fight. But at this point... I mean, Kamigawa has to idle his wheels. And Rubenstock does not, so Rubenstock, in the end, is just gonna have the knights out. And meanwhile, Kamigawa was still unable to click up. He has the mm, blacksmith and the stable. He could click up. Kamigawa could click up, but I think he's busy not dying. He's legit busy not dying. But at this point, Yupe can just repair. Yupe has one stone in the bank, by the way, just to point that one out. That's all you need to repair a TC. Castle Age is coming up here for Kamigawa. He needs to keep this TC alive until he gets up to castle. And I think he should be able to unless he runs out of wood. But he doesn't really have a lot of wood and he just dropped the barracks and the lumber camp. And it doesn't matter that you have a lot more villagers garrisoned in here if you can't repair your TC. You play again with a double douche. I'm not even surprised on the double douche now. 100 wood remaining, apparently Kamigawa is still fine with that, but he's slowly losing building HP. 40% only towards Castle Age, and we do have Castle Age kicking in here for Rubenstock. He's gonna start popping out knights like a madman and the siege workshop on the front for some mangonels. Kamigawa at 50%, at 900 HP only with the TC though. And as I said, once those villagers get ejected, that could be a disaster for uh, Kamigawa, because suddenly he loses all his firepower. And Yupe is just doing a better job repairing. Indeed, Kamigawa is giving up on this one, but can he afford to give up on this? 70% towards uh, Castle Age, repairing with two Voyagers. There is no opening for the Knights to run in and kill the Voyagers. I think this might just be enough to get up to Castle Age. The Mangonel is going to be just a few seconds too late to try and stop this one. Castle Age is going to kick in for Kamigawa, but it comes at a price. It comes at a very, very painful price, and that's going to be a town center over here. Um, Kamigawa is going to be walled off, and in the meanwhile, Pete Martel is actually up to seven, I repeat, seven villagers. He's at a glorious 556 points. I want to point out that you start with something like... Correct me if I'm wrong, but... You start with like 300 score, right? So, technically he's almost like he hasn't even started this game. The TC goes down. So yeah, Kamigawa up with the market, but now he has knights in his eco. If he opens the gates to save these villagers, then the knights will actually get into his eco. He cannot afford. This is going to be a painful loss, but he has to take it. Because... Yep, if he opens it, he's dead. Kamigawa's gonna call it. And Vinland's is gonna get into the finals, so we might be able to witness one more ultimate uh, chaos pit series here. Great place, I have to say, from Suomi, and uh, I don't know who is in the finals. Because, um, well, 
I don't know where the brackets are for this. But whoever it is, I think that it's going to be a fun one. And I will try to cast it. Let's take a quick look at the Gloria statistics. We are going to have no feudal age for Yupe, double TC douches, and uh, buildings raised, Yupe 2, buildings lost, 0. Because apparently your own deleted buildings do not count. There was 2 buildings lost in this entire game, basically. Actually 3. Ruben stock killed something. Russia, Mexico, France. Okay, so that is the ultimate, the legendary chaos pit. You played nicely Kamigawa, so there is nothing to be said about. I think this was probably one of the best series I've ever seen in my life in competitive Age of Empires.